Welcome to the Dirt Life Show with your host, George Hamill. Yeah, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dirt Life Show. We have episode 137 with Cohen Crawford and uh, Sean Crawford, his dad here. It's going to be an awesome show for you guys tonight. We're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about racing. We're going to talk about everything that happens inside a racing program that has to do with uh, anything coming up through the ranks, uh, a bunch of cool stuff. Cohen's done track and field, all kinds of stuff, man. He's been racing for a long time, uh, really enjoying it, and he even puts in all the hard work, doing all the schoolwork, working a day job, all that stuff. So we're going to get into it because you guys will definitely benefit from your race program, hearing all the stories of Cohen. So we're really excited. What's up, dude? How are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, man. Sean, thank you very much for sitting with us, dude. We really appreciate it. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> a little stage train or no? No, no, I was worried about the internet. Oh, yeah. Well, we're all worried about the internet. So uh, <laughs> we're live on Instagram. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to be live on Facebook and YouTube, but it seems like we always have technology problems. We always try to get through it as much as possible. So at least we're with you guys. Uh, we're doing a, a pre. Uh, post recording that we're going to upload to uh, YouTube and Facebook as well. But man, like I said, we have a bunch of fun stuff to talk about. I can't believe that we have 137 episodes already under our belt, man. I was kind of hoping it was 148. I so know, I'll cover that too. That'd be yeah. sweet. Uh, to, to match your number. So uh, thank you guys all for joining us. It's July 25th, Monday, and uh, we're in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you guys for uh, welcoming us to your house to hang out, man. Of course. We'd love to have you. This, love this opportunity. Thank you so much for. Uh, Allowing us to put ourselves out here on your, on your uh, program, yeah. Dude, it's pretty cool, man. And I like the family vibe. That's my favorite part about it. But I still think that people are probably wondering how crazy you are putting two race cars <laughs> in the back porch yeah, by, the pool, by the pool out Yeah, there. two inches away from the pool. It is a little sketchy getting those back there. Hopefully, uh, You've you driven into a trailer, trailer a couple times, but have you ever driven next to a pool with a race car? No, not next to a pool. That's the first thing. <laughs> That's wild, right? Was your mom pissed? No, surprisingly not. She's always been supportive of this kind of stuff. So, so whatever I need, she's. I still think it's hilarious. My mom would kick my ass if I had to race cars on the back porch, man. She, she did. She puts up a couple towels here and there to make sure they save the papers. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, so, like I said, uh, we're going to talk about some really fun uh, topics tonight. I'm your host, Jordy Hamill. We're in Gilbert, Arizona, uh, at the Crawford Compound. Uh, we would like you guys to share the show. So, anybody that's watching the show now, um, please uh, via Instagram. There's a little button in the bottom right hand corner, looks like a paper airplane, hit that, share it with all your friends and family and uh, let us know what you guys think about the show, if you guys do have any questions, comments, anything like that that you want to throw out. Uh, we got our girl behind the scenes, Keely, Cohen's mom, is going to be answering all of you guys' uh, uh, or telling us all of you guys' comments and questions and letting us know. If you guys are mean to her, she's not going to let you through, so make sure you're nice. Uh, <laughs> hey, so, hey. Yep. Behind the scenes, man. Producing the show. How about that? Making it happen. Uh, so thank you very much, Keely, for doing all that stuff. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, like I said, share the show. You can always watch us anytime on uh, Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. We have uh, all of those channels available. You can uh, comment in anytime as well. We really appreciate you guys watching all the live shows uh, and letting us know what you guys think, especially because you can interact so much with our guests. If you've ever wanted to talk to Cohen at the races and he's been so busy and you haven't had time, well, now's your chance. So uh, any family, friends, you guys are more than welcome to ask him questions and uh, tell him how good a racer he is as well. We have some cool stories uh, that I'm gonna talk about tonight. Uh, some of tonight's topics, we're gonna talk about racing, we're gonna talk about family, we're going to talk about uh, how Cohen got started racing, uh, some of the traveling, some of the experiences that they all have together. A lot of the same things that all you guys experience as well when you guys are racing and traveling across the country with your guys' family. So, uh, <clears throat> man, let's thank our sponsors and then we'll just get into it. So, uh, I always want to thank uh, everybody that tunes into the show. You guys are the most important part. So, share the show as much as you possibly can. Uh, thank you to the guys over at KMC Wheels for being a part of the show since day one. Uh, you can go over to wheelmerch.com, get some of the awesome wheel, uh, stuff like this t-shirt that I'm wearing, or uh, go over and check out some of their wheels at any of the four wheel parts dealerships in your area. And uh, yeah, pick some of those bad boys up. Let's see here. Uh, thank you to Maxis Tires for coming on board. We have some cool stuff that we're gonna be doing with them at Vegas Serino coming up. Uh, so pay attention to that stuff. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, let's see here, the guys over at Motul, hooked me up with this awesome hat, but they have uh, racing oils. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they call them 300B. 
Uh, they're pretty awesome oils, man. Um, really, really low resistance, so uh, your car can go faster. Better resistance, better lubricants, better racing, better results. Uh, thanks to you guys over at Shock Therapy. We were able to stop by Shock Therapy today. Those guys are doing some pretty amazing things over there. Uh, really, really uh, encourage you guys to go over there. Use the code DIRTLIFE at shocktherapist.com. Save some money on limit straps, steering racks, uh, BSD kits, any of that stuff. Uh, you can get your shocks redone. To, uh, tell them the Dirt Life sent you. Thank you, guys, over at JL Audio. Uh, we're going to do some pretty cool stuff. I just picked up a Pro R. We're going to throw a whole JL system in that bad boy. Get that bad boy cranked and maybe even bring it out to Sandsport Super Show. That'd be sweet, guys. Nice. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Evolution Power Sports. Uh, they got the code shooter. They got exhaust. I'm thinking about putting some of that on my uh, Pro R, too. Yeah, that'd be legit. They're the company to go for, for sure. Dude, they really are. They're doing some good stuff, man. Uh, thank you, guys, over at Zolander Racing products you can use the code at the dirt life get yourself some tie rods some radius rods anything to match up with your shock therapy steering rack uh thank you guys over at vision canopies uh i saw amy mcmillan got a new vision canopy that thing looks pretty sweet so check that out on instagram and thank you guys over at crowd heat uh have you ever seen that stuff the josh and old team at i had some pretty badass stuff that they put together some real promising stuff i've heard from other races and stuff yeah, they, and plus it's so shiny and nice. Yeah. It's like a Gucci for like guys yeah. in racing, right? Like or the yeah, uh, Gucci for Tiff yeah, <laughs> Tiffany diamond rings. That we all like that Crowley stuff. So thanks to Josh and everybody at Crowley for supporting the show. Uh, please tell them that the Dirt Life sent you if you need any products from any of those companies. Uh, and like I said, you guys can listen to us on uh, all the audio networks and all that stuff. Um, so let's just get into it, man. Uh, how did you even get into racing? Well, it's kind of a funny story. It's not like most people. So we were actually, my dad and I were watching the Lucas Oil uh, race back when it was a series. And I've always just been a calm, quiet, didn't say much type of kid. And uh, we were just watching the Junior One class. It was the class I'd be racing in. And uh, my dad saw something in me where I was like, there's the kids were on the podium. And I was like, wow, I want to beat that kid on the podium. My dad was like, what? Did you know it? I did not know. No clue. No clue. No idea. And my dad kind of picked up on that. He's kind of like, what the heck? For him to say something like that, it's it's quite the drive. So sure enough, I uh, went down there and told the kid I was going to beat him on the podium next year. And I, I don't know who the kid was, but hopefully I beat him. For the next year. It was Ronnie <laughs> Anderson or somebody? Yeah. yeah it, was, it was a yellow car. I think, I don't quite know who it was, but we've, we've been trying to figure this out. Years now. See but who it was? It yeah. might have been like Huntington and Hart. I think they were still racing back. Yeah, then. yeah. Hart and Huntington. That's a, actually that's a really good story though, right? So yeah. what did you think, Sean, when he went up there to do that? <clears throat> no one coming in as quiet as he is and not really saying a whole lot for him to pull my hand and take me down here through this crowd of all these people to tell his kid he doesn't know that he's gonna beat him next year. I'm like, he may have stumbled onto something here. Yeah. And uh, we've been Balm's passion ever since. So what kind of stuff did you do before that? Like where was the driver motivation for that? Or actually, let's do two questions. What kind of stuff did you do before that? And then where did the drive come from last your dad? BMX, so that's what I started out in BMX, my dad. Well, first of all, we'll start way back as a dude. So I've been riding quads and stuff since before I could walk. And so that and won a championship with that and then kind of um, grew Starting with BMX, so. A while yeah, back that's a long time though, that's, right? Yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been doing this for more than half my life. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. And yeah. so now you're 18 years old. Yep. So um, it's pretty cool to see that you have all that prowess already, right? Yep. Um, yeah. We can't turn the mics up anymore because they're not connected to, to Instagram. So sorry about that. I don't know how else to fix it, bud. Um, it usually works. But since the uh, system is not connected through the Internet, we're just going to have to deal with it this way. So sorry, Jason, uh, or anybody that's listening. Has anybody else said that as well? Okay. Yeah, so all of our mics are on, and we're still doing a recording that we're doing uh, on uh, the big computer. So um, we do have all that stuff being recorded. We're going to keep going and uh, do the show. We we can do, if you want, is uh, take the phone out of the cradle, and then if you want to walk over here, like walk around, get closer to us, and we'll, well, it's going to suck for you. But when we talk to each other, you can just move it closer <laughs> to each, each other and move it to our face. But you're going to have to direct it like a cameraman. So Keely's going to have all kinds of duties today, man. Oh, yeah. Mega producer over here. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so having all that, uh, I don't know, 
it's you've been racing more than like I have. Like I've only been in the off road racing world since 2014, 2015. Yeah, and you've been in it longer than I have. So that's got to feel pretty good. Like since you've been doing it a long time. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely feels great. Get some experience on my belt, and it's weird. Recently, I've started to feel the the other way around, where I'm more of the veteran driver. Where my whole life, growing up, I've always been the young one to watch out for. Always the old guys, always complaining. But it's weird now. I'm starting to see the younger generations, and especially Chase Carr, you know, kicking my ass every weekend. It's crazy to see it it happen the other way around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but it is kind of cool though, right? Because you can see all of the competition and all the people that are coming up and the, through the ranks and it's gotta be like, cause the side-by-side or off-road industry has grown so much over yes. the past few years it has. and you've been part of it since such a young age. It's gotta be cool to see it develop too. Yeah. It's awesome to see it start out from a Yamaha Rhino where everyone was just ripping those in the dunes. And now we're getting four cylinder, basically car engines inside of a sand car. It's crazy, it's right? Yeah. It's nuts how fast it's been growing. Yeah, exactly. So it's, but it, it's crazy to see because uh, it means that the industry is progressing forward so much yeah. that now we have the capability to have a four cylinder. Do you even think that like that was going to happen five years ago? No, I had no idea. I thought this is just going to be some recreational kind of Joe Schmo go to the dune, send it off the side of a cliff, buy another one type of deal. But no, <laughs> it's definitely grown into some major, major racing and sponsors and huge pay. P- companies and people involved so when you started did you, you started in trophy carts then or yeah, i started junior, junior one yep dude i wish i had started the, the, like the back then too those cars look so yeah. fun no i definitely we did a half season of junior one and then we ended up moving up to junior two and then we did a season and a half of junior two but then we stepped in the mod cart the mod cart is by far the best thing you can get your hands on to drive it is a go-kart on steroids that jumps and it's nuts. It, they're pretty wild, right? Yeah, it's wild. And I, I hate to see all these kids that are uh, racing these 170s, you know, when their age group would slightly be around a mod cart. And I would just love to see the smile on those kids' faces after they get out of, outside of a mod cart because those things are nuts. Well, <laughs> yeah, but we got to talk about it in two different aspects, though. And your dad can align with this. But, like, um, a mod cart, a good mod cart is 50 grand. Oh, a good one seventy is like way less. Yeah, a yeah. good mod car. I've heard people paying upwards north of ninety thousand dollars for a whole program <laughs> for a, a kid's cart with a quad motor in it. That's so, yeah. Dad. Do you, would you have rather seen a one seventy for Cohen or what? Um, no, I, I I agree. I think the mod cart um, to be able to experience uh, how fast they go and the hand eye coordination. You got a clutch, you got a brake, and I think there's some value that um, you learn from racing in that series and that class that you wouldn't have in any other class. Yeah, because they're just so wild, right? So wild, It's just so crazy. Yeah, it's so crazy to see. But it's cool that the kids have the opportunity to do it. I wish that mod carts were everywhere, though. Yeah. Um, But it does seem like the side-by-sides are kind of taken over. Now we have, like, the Razor 200, and then there's a modified class and the Razor 250 stuff. Um, Do you wish that was around when you were smaller? I do, because I feel like it's... From junior two to mod cart is a huge stepping stone. A junior two is kind of you're more worried about keeping corner speed up, which you are in a mod cart, but right. it's like driving a go kart. Where yeah. a mod cart is like driving a Tasmanian devil, you're just holding on for dear life. <laughs> That's which, a good way to put it. Uh, for a 14 year old, 13 year old to get their hands on that from a junior two is definitely a huge stepping stone from that. But definitely, like these days, the whole Razor 200 and stuff, it's definitely a good stepping stone um, to get drivers into the um, faster classes. That's not so expensive. You know, it's a good, you can pick one up cheap, put a cage on it and go out racing. Yeah, yeah. totally. All right. So I think we got Jason Weller uh, on right now. Did, uh, were you, did you already accept him or no? Okay. So Jason's on with us now. What's up, Jason Weller? How are you? Oh, uh, Corey's there too. Yes. I can grab it. Will you uh, will you put your microphone, Keely, right next to the speaker on the uh, on the phone? Like yeah. up to the bottom. You can just hang it off the bottom there. Sorry, Jason, we're having some technical difficulties, so I appreciate you guys uh, hanging tight with us. And uh... no problem. Oh, there we go. Put the microphone all the way at the bottom of the phone. There you go. So uh, yeah, man, when did you first meet Cohen? So they've been uh, they've been a customer for a few years now, you know, racing the YXZ mostly. So uh, I think uh, one of the first parts they bought from us was like a power steering and rack, and 
you know, racing the YXZ and uh, just been a good customer and then started doing more with them. And then, uh, yeah, this year we built a whole car for them. So kind of stepping it up. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's cool to see though, right? Because you guys have been, have said such a long standing uh, YXZ, you know, program and stuff like that. It's pretty cool to see that uh, people are coming to you even in the, you know, the day and age of having and all these turbo cars, right? And they're still really wanting to perfect that YXZ program. I mean, the YXZ is great. It's hard to beat and like the tight stuff, uh, you know, it's, a, it's shifting. So the driver's car. Yeah, it's, it's totally different. You know, it's, it's a car you really have to, you got to hit your shift points and uh, it, it is quicker on the tighter stuff, but um, it's different drivers, different vehicles. People like different things, you know, and you can definitely make a YXZ fast especially in the tighter stuff uh, our business is is we do a lot of them and we've been doing it for a long time so when somebody comes up to us and says hey i want what Edgar has or i want to go fast and uh we can definitely help them out like yeah. just like that dude it's so cool to see and we actually uh got to have a, a shop tour with you guys and we had an episode with you guys a little while ago and you were able to show us some of the uh, long-standing stuff that you guys have had uh, doing with Yamahas and the Rhinos and the SR1s and all that stuff. Obviously, you guys have a, a tight integration with the Can-Am program now. But even to see, like, uh, one of your cars on the track, like at, when I saw Cohen at the Texas Outlaw Series, it was so cool because it uh, – I don't want to say nostalgia, but it reminded me of the Lucas days, right? And you could see Cohen using the, the transmission in the rear end to, like, throw the car around the corners. Like, I was just thinking about the times when you and Corey were out there on the track doing that same kind of thing, how fun it was for you guys too. Yeah. Hey, um, I was, Cohen, how do you feel about racing a YXZ out there in that series? Um, is it a – I don't know. What's that competition like? It seems. It seems – pretty stiff out there like it seems like there's some really fast guys how's it going uh, out there this year yeah no um with this new car we are scorching fast but we just had some crazy bad luck happen to us these recent races but yeah no, the competition's stiff with these rs ones they're really really starting to get them figured out and they're hard to beat you know just because they they get around those tight like one 180 corner so fast you know they just zip right around they're a lot more nimble they seem around the tighter stuff where we need to get on the gas and around the corners a little bit more um compared to them but i feel like we definitely have the pace to keep up with them and beat them we just need some luck with this new car there i'd be able to hear us a little bit better hopefully you guys can hear us a little bit better Corey and jason sorry about that no, no problem <laughs> I'm trying to read your lips. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the way it goes with technology sometimes, yeah. I guess, right? Um, yeah, so it, could you tell what Cohen said, how he said that it was uh, pretty hard to keep up with some of those RS1s? Yeah, yeah, it would be hard. I mean, there, there's, you know, single seat. Uh, the balance is really good. It, totally different type of suspension. Um, but it's what kind of makes that kind of racing fun to watch, too. You know, it's apples and oranges. Um, and, uh, again, YXZ is a driver's car. And so I think to be fast in a YXZ and, and to be RS ones, I mean, you've got to be a great driver. It's just, you, you can't not be. So as far as developing you as a driver, I think the YXZ is a fantastic machine to be in as well. Yeah. I completely yeah. agree with that. It's your hands are so busy. You're steering with one hand, half of the track, pulling tear off, banging gears. It's definitely way more involved as a driver and they're just angry to drive compared to an RS1. There's <laughs> just, That's how you put it, angry. Yeah, there's just really, really, I don't know, just hard to manage, which is a good and a bad thing because you can really drive them aggressive and get around those corners and sort of manhandle it around corners where, where certain driving styles matches up. How do you nicer. think that will put you in a position, like let's just say you were to go drive a CBT car, like what do you think the difference would be? Do you think you'd be good at it? Me personally, I think I would be great at it. Just obviously I'm a bias <laughs> opinion but i think it would be awesome just because the yxz has taught me to be on my toes every single corner you know where a cvt where it's just gas brake turn you know um i'm just comparing i've never driven one so i don't want to well the reason i was asking that drivers. the reason i was going to ask that question was because you have two people that are on with us right now Corey and jason that have made a transition that's similar to that yep. so maybe they could give you a little bit of advice yeah no, I definitely talked to Corey a little bit about um, some driving tips, and she's so helpful with trying to get these white yeah. geese figured out also. We, we get to have talks about 
flat tires and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, that? I mean, when I was driving the YXZ, that's that's what I thought too. I thought uh, when I went to something else, it was like automatic or whatever. I thought it'd be you know almost boring, but uh, like with the Can Am, we have the turbo, so it's uh, it's still a lot of work because you're working on keeping it spooled up and you're trying to keep it like downshifted, so to speak, to where when you get on the gas, you have the RPM and the and the boost to get it going. So it's it's kind of similar, but it's just a whole different world in uh, getting the power to the ground. So. Do you think that Cohen would have an easy transition moving into something like that if he wanted to race, like, let's just say, uh, a turbo cl- in the turbo class? Yeah, I think once yeah. you drive a YXZ, it's probably so much like an SR1. It's, it's probably one of the tougher ones to drive. So I think if you get good at that, I think, yeah, if you drive any any CBT, it's probably going to be easier for you for sure. Yeah, it, the only thing really that's different, um, the biggest difference I noticed was uh, your timing. Um with the turbo lag and how you enter a corner uh, in the YXZ, you can pretty much just dive straight to the apex, hit the brakes, downshift, get back on the gas, all kind of at the same time. And like in our Kenny Ams, it's, it's more, um, you have to brake a lot earlier, be gassing through the corner, through the apex so that your wheel spin kicks in um, as you're sideways. You know, it's the trailing arms. Don't really want to corner the way an arm hybrid car does. So you got to get that wheel spin for, for safety. So uh, that that's probably the biggest difference, but that's you can pick that up in three laps. <laughs> yeah, it almost makes it fun because you have a difference and it's like a new challenge. So yeah, yeah. but it's definitely something you got to predict and you got to throw it in a corner and kind of guess when it's going to need the power. You know, so you got to get it ahead of time. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of cool though. Like, and especially you being such a young driver, I feel like you'd like really love like that new challenge. Yeah, especially even. Corey and Jason as like real like really good drivers I feel like being able to pick stuff up like that is is awesome it's a fun challenge and I would love yeah. to get my feet wet in a CVT car um <laughs> I just would love to try it and that challenge does sound a lot of fun um with that whole power band and getting around the corner with the YXZ it's direct you get on the gas and the power is right there on the ground so what are the cars that you've driven so far then you've driven mod carts or in junior carts yeah. and then uh side by side yeah so just junior junior one junior two mod cart and side by sides is all i've all and I've the driven. side by sides has just been the YXZ just huh? straight YXZ my yeah. whole side by side career man i feel like it, jason Corey. i feel like we got to get him a little <laughs> bit more well-rounded right <laughs> He's just going to be there with his macchiato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, do, I do. don't know what to do with my hand. My hand's well, floating up to the air. <laughs> yeah. It's tough, in, it's tough in short course or side-by-side racing in general. You know, you, you almost have to pay your dues. And, and he's doing it right. He's, he's, he's putting in the time. He's, he's working on his own stuff. He's prepping his own stuff. He's got a great family with his dad helping him. And, uh, you know, I, I remember when they started to where they're at now, they've definitely just... They've done the steps, and they're they're doing what it takes to get there. And when they get there, they're going to be solid, but, and they're going to be, you know, they can race whatever car they want, in factory sponsorship, and they're going to be uh, ones that are not going to mess up and not going to have, you know, they're going to have the parts they need and stuff like that. So it just it's paying your dues, really, and, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, I feel like that's a really, really good statement that Jason just yeah. brought up, too, is like, how does it feel for you guys? Do you guys feel like you're working your way up? Do you feel like you're paying the dues to get to the top, or like what is? It, or does it just feel like a whole bunch of extra work? It it just feels like the next step. You know, I have the goal in my head of just winning that race weekend, winning the championship, and it's just whatever it takes to chip away at that next step. Whether it's prepping the car, whether it's cleaning this extra bit of mud off, just that extra little bit, just to get ahead of your competition. Yeah, I can totally see that. And so we talk a lot about racing and family and stuff. And Corey and Jason, you've been around for a long time to be able to see that. It's neat to see that uh, Cohen, along with a lot of other drivers, have the family support and uh, background to be able to do everything. It really helps a lot when you're out at the races. Yeah. Well, and it's always good to see um, drivers involved in their program, like super involved, not just the driving part of it, you know, like working on the cars and making the decisions and doing all the homework like that's that's huge that's huge in driver development but there's Probably. a lot of there's a lot of drivers that go out to the races and they're just not prepared you know they don't spot or they don't parts or you know they wreck their stuff and it's it's just steps back you know and it's definitely it's a big deal when you guys are, are solid and you have your stuff and you're clean yeah, so much respect yeah <laughs> i have so much respect for that i always think that too and then so uh Corey and jason you guys have spent years uh, traveling around the country and doing a lot of these fun uh, activities, 
but with the work ethic in mind, doing all the racing. Like when you see a family like uh, the Crawford family and they're all going together and they're going to the races together, they're traveling to Texas, they're going to the works races and some other stuff that we'll talk about going later. Like to me, that's an admirable just by itself because that is such a bonding experience for any family or any couple like you guys do it going across the country. It's pretty, like it's just uh, it always baffles me how people don't do that on their own because it's such a good experience. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work. I think you got to be a little weird to enjoy it. <laughs> no, <for sure. laughs> but Definitely. I think that's why we're all such a, a close race family in the end. You know, we, we all know what each one of us goes through to do what we do. And, and it's it's a passion. It has to be, you know, to put that much work and, and time and, and money into it. But I think that, you know, to spend that much time with your family and somebody that you love, um, you know, your kids or your parents spouses uh it's it's such quality time and it sounds cliche but it really is I, I don't know anything else that we could do where we could learn each other you know that way and have respect and, and build i don't know camaraderie and you know it, it goes through the whole family and you have memories you'll have memories forever you know you have trophies and you can look back on those 20 years from now and be like hey remember that weekend that weekend sucked <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hey that was the best weekend of my life yeah. so you just you'll always have that to to talk about and look back on yep. yeah i it agree with too. <laughs> what did you say jason i said it goes quick too <laughs> that is a it good point really yeah fast. yes you know, well, you're <laughs> hey, did you guys know that Cohen's a, a track and field star too? Is he? Uh, slightly, yeah. I, I like <laughs> whatever it takes to go fast. I'm there for it. Whether it's on the feet, cars, <laughs> love to go fast. Hey, so I actually was going to ask you about this. Like, so what is the the other sports and stuff that you do? Like, because I saw some stuff like you like doing track and field stuff, or what was it? The uh, what do they call it? Like the discus or shot put and stuff like that. Yeah. So I saw you had some records. Yeah, so I hold a record in the uh, Highland Junior High School for the farthest discus throw of all things. Like, my <laughs> skinny self is going up against these 300-pound dudes that are overgrown, and I'm just slinging it farther than there. I don't know how it happened. It's just kinda, How far was it? You know? It, it was... I totally did not like see that coming. When I saw it, I, I was like, that, that result doesn't fit you no, at all. Not at all. No, I can't remember what it was, but it was, it was something obnoxious. For, for what I was doing. Did you even have any idea about that, uh, Jason uh, or Corey? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty awesome, though. But it's not surprising. You know, he's competitive. And um, I think if you're a competitive person, it, yeah, you've probably got a lot of other things going on that you're just as competitive in. So it's, I'm not surprised to hear that. I'm not surprised to hear that he's got a record. So I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's awesome, too. Uh, well, hey, the only other thing I was going to ask uh, Cohen to kind of get you guys a little bit more excited was how was that chocolate cake at uh, uh, Oak Hill? You want to give them a little bit of lay of the land because they like nice dirt. Oh, no, that dirt was amazing. With Once it was prepped, that was, that was perfect dirt. It was the most forgiving yet, like, traction dirt. It was nuts. I love that. I've never raced on anything like it before. Yeah, and even to go further than that, Jason and Corey, like at the end of the day, the track was so rough. Like you guys would have loved it because like I know Corey and Jason, when you guys race, the rougher, the better for you guys because you're yep. it pulls out all the driving talent, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> it it would have reminded you kind of like of the, the moto or quad days, like where you guys get a real rough track. It was sweet. I would love to see you guys come out there one of these days. Yeah, rough tracks are always fun because, you know, you get your lines and you just kind of get into your groove and, and holes everywhere. And, and usually the, the biggest holes are in the best lines. So then you, you just have to adjust on the fly. And sometimes it, it wasn't there two laps ago and now it's there. And, and so the, it's fun to have to make those really instant decisions, um, you know, and, and to have the ability and the, and the experience to, to generally make the correct ones at the time it counts. That, that definitely helps us a lot. It, it bites me sometimes, but it's still really fun. Yeah, it's crazy that she's... Go ahead, Jason. We practicing, too. It's like, you want to practice on, like, a perfect track. And, uh, you know, I remember back in the day when we first started, it was like, all right, the water truck would just go out there and soak the track for practice. And you're like, all right, let's go. He'd and send it, me out there. I'm like, oh, hey, well, if you learn to drive when it's wet, it'll be easy when it's dry. <laughs> it helps so much. Like, if you, if you go out there when you don't want to go and you do all the hard stuff, when it comes down to the race, you got that under your belt, so... 
Yeah. Helps. I couldn't agree more. I think it's so good. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw it through the Instagram, but Cohen just tapped his dad on the uh, on the arm. Would yes. you guys have a previous discussion about so this? So there, there's a saying that goes on in this house. It goes, so I, what was it? We were in Nevada in a mod cart, and I was just beat by the end of the race. You know, the track was blue grooved, holes everywhere, and I was just trying to get and survive through the race, except the spotter was – I kept hitting this hole consistently every single lap, and it was shaving a bunch of time off, well, making it worse. And I was trying to tell him to miss the hole. Yeah, that one. Don't hit that one. Yeah. So every he, single lap. So <laughs> by the end of the race, he kept saying, yeah, that hole hit it one more time. Yeah, just yeah, hit, hit it. Hit, just hit it. Go right through <laughs> that hole. That one. You've been doing great all race. Keep it up. <laughs> so that's just kind of like our saying, if something repetitive goes on. That's just kind of, yeah, hit that hole one yeah, more time. Hit that hole one more time right <laughs> so there. So it's like the a, same a, one. A, a joke that keeps on living? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> you guys know all about that spotter racer life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your guys' busy schedule. Uh, anything else happening with you guys before you guys bail out? Yeah, first thing on Cohen, you know, um, you and Sean, you guys – uh, great re- representation for us, and we appreciate everything you do for us. And, awesome. Uh, everything's clean, and you guys run a good setup and real professional, and we really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you're, you. Well, wow, thank you're you. Definitely again. stepping up, and it's it's huge gains. And uh, we're every time we see finishes and pictures and stuff, we're always excited and yeah. kind of cheering you guys on. So thank you. Awesome. thank you. Thank you. Doing a good job. Well, thank yeah. you guys. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Jason. We'll see you guys soon. All right. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Super cool to see that uh, you get that much respect from some people that are uh, so ingrained and in, in, been in the industry for so long, right? They yeah. they help out a lot of people. So when you hear kind words like that, it must mean a lot. Yeah, it, it's awesome. I mean, you see, they are such a like well respected people in in and outside of racing. You know, they're just well rounded. Run a great program, whatever they do, which is why we went to them with with stuff and cars and it feels great coming from someone like that yeah absolutely uh all right so let's get a little bit back to what uh like the beginning of uh i don't know what you want to call it the beginning of your story so um you grew up in in arizona right yep and uh started going to the dunes kind of the whole like i don't know i feel like that's the standard way that people get into racing right but then you saw like that you wanted to get into racing when your dad Mm -hmm. took you to the races was it at wild horse pass yep wild horse pass was my first race and uh we, uh, the very first car we bought was a... Uh, That's the first uh, off-road race that I ever saw, too, at Wild Horse Pass. Yeah. No, no. It was... It, we ran, we had an old Junior 1 Outlaw cart, which they didn't even race those at the time we bought it. But we had no idea. That <laughs> we, we, did, we didn't do our research on that one. Yeah. Really? <laughs> we just saw a trophy cart for a decent price. All in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Went for it. And what happened? Well... You got, to, you got to drive it or what? <laughs> we took it out to the desert for about 10 minutes and it like threw a rod off the side of the motor or something. So that was the oh, end of that great. one. Yeah. <laughs> Smoked it. Was that because your foot, right foot was too heavy? Or? Probably. That's been the story of my life, my whole <laughs> racing career, it seems like. I need to take a couple steps back on the on the right foot. But Smooth as fast. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Smooth yep. as fast and hit the hole. Yes, yes. and it hit the hole. Always hit that one hole. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think we have, uh, oh, yeah, we have a picture that we're going to show you uh, that, uh, (laughs) so this is what got you into racing, I feel like. So we have a picture that we're going to show you guys, uh, we're going to show you guys uh, on Facebook and YouTube first, and then uh, on Instagram. So that's young Colin. Uh, Do you remember how old you were when you were sleeping with your steering wheel? I was probably 10, 9, 10. Yeah. And thank you to your mom, Keely, for showing us that. That's a pretty (laughs) good picture, man. Yeah, that's, that basically represents my... My racing life. <laughs> Your love for off-road. Yeah, hey, love for so driving. I saw that uh, Colin Truitt has, has joined us. I thought he was going to come on the show tonight. So, Colin, if you remember how to come on the show, just join us anytime, dude. We can uh, talk a little bit more about uh, some of the fun stuff that you've dealt, or you've uh, uh, had with Cohen, maybe on and off the track, I guess. Huh? Yeah. Are you good friends with Colin? Yeah, we, we've gotten closer over the years with hanging out at Techplex. I've always seemed to kind of gravitate towards him. We've always seemed to get along pretty well. Uh, what kind of stuff do you do to like keep up with racing? Do you do uh, like physical training? Do you eat well? Like what's uh? Yeah, well, I try to go to the gym every single day um, as much as I can. Besides Sundays, so I try to keep my fitness up as much as I can. Um, eat great. Um, she's okay. Oh yeah, Colin's. Uh, yeah, you can you can let him in. Uh, yeah, so Colin's going to join us in just a second here. Uh, where does Colin live? Do you remember? 
I don't. I thought know. he, he lives like somewhere North, where it's late right now, right? Yeah, North Carolina. It's like South, eight o'clock. South Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, somewhere over there. Hey. It sounds like Colin's on right now. What's up, Colin Truett? How are you, buddy? Oh, uh, not much. How are you, dude? Not the right reply. I'm good. How you doing? So we were just discussing. Uh, I forgot where you told me that you lived. North Carolina. North, North Carolina. Carolina. That's it. Yeah. 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 Sure. Foot, foot hills of the mountains. So not the east coast, but pretty much the east coast. You're right on, man. Uh, hey, how long have you known yeah. Colin? Uh, he started racing with us last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And that's when I met him my first time, I think. Yep. So that's how long I've known him. So let me ask you a question. Were you like, oh, this guy in the YXZ, what the hell is he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the on Texplex, yeah, the, the track is is a uh, it's not a, it wasn't a very good track for you know for slinging gears and throwing steering wheels around. Yeah, it's quite it a was bit more different. Of a smooth flowing type of track. It's so. quite a bit different driving style, right? And the uh, X Travel just joined us. What's up, James? How are you? Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy though, right? Like, and you see so much. We talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the show, like how the industry is growing and side by side and off road racing is getting bigger. But you can see all this diversity in the classes, right? So now you have, yeah. um, speaking of the, the Texas series, uh, the Texas Outlaw series, you have the pro stock class is one of the most diverse classes because it has Yamahas in it, it has Hondas in it, it has uh, Polaris is in it, yeah. it also has Polaris RS1s in it. Yeah. And all of them can be. Uh, I guess competitive and semi-competitive is probably the way I would word it. Yeah, right. um, but it's pretty rad, right? Like, yeah. when you think about it, like, I don't know, man. Like, that didn't happen four years ago. Yeah, it's crazy to see everyone. Like, it's a wide... Yeah. Every, that's the only series it's or definitely class, I guess you classes. could say, with everything. All manufacturers has their foot in the door. Yeah, dude, totally. And it, But it's cool to see the cut level of competition too, right? Like, so in my in my opinion, I mean, Colin has been at the front of the field for a little bit now, right? Yeah. So it's a good goal to like a carrot to chase for you. Yep, um, but for in sure. my opinion, um, if Colin messes up, there's four or five guys, yourself included, that could yeah. win at that track. Yeah, that's why I love that it's the pretty much podium <laughs> on back where it's just so competitive. We're swapping, <laughs> especially at this new track where everyone's kind of chasing – car setups and trying to get it figured out this last race yeah, was trying, awesome trying to figure out tires and yeah, suspension yeah, tires. what works one. and what doesn't it's a yeah. new track new stuff everybody's got to figure it out which yeah, Colin, Colin had it on lock he had a half a track lead over everyone yeah he figured it out first <laughs> dude he did figure it out pretty easy right yeah. seems uh, to be the common I wouldn't say I figured it out easy I had a bad Friday <laughs> actually I did see him kind of sweating on Friday a little bit when I was cruising around the track he was sweating pretty good he was like I don't know what to do like uh, but what and, he, and it wasn't because it was 107 degrees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Colin, like when uh, since we obviously have Colin on the show, uh, when you see him operating a program, you do a lot of the stuff yourself uh, for your program as well, family oriented. Uh, when you see a family like you know Cohen and Sean and Keeley and Kendall and everybody coming to the races and all supporting each other, it's got to make you feel good, especially when you're battling door to door on the track. Because you know he's not going to hit you hard because he doesn't want to work on it when he comes back to the truck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's the same stuff we run into. You know, it's, uh, if you if you mess the car up, you got to fix it. But it's really cool to see uh, another family out there doing the same stuff that we've been doing for years, just going at it, doing the right stuff, putting in the right work. Yeah, totally. Uh, showing up with a whole family in a pickup truck. I don't know where they all stay, but you know, I feel for some of them. <laughs> John Hopper I, said, I "Yamaha." Yeah, I know. Also- I know with our experience, the the women dictate where we sleep. So yeah, yeah. I think so, it's the same with you guys. But they also so, fe- they also feed you. Yes. They uh, yeah. They give you drinks, so they uh, they're allowed can't live to. Without them. Yep, exactly. Yeah, John Huppert's actually commented and said the Yamahas also did well in the pro stock class at uh, ERX as well. Oh yeah. In the Champ Series over there, the Yamahas have uh, I don't want to say an advantage or anything like that, but uh, the cars work better in those series, right? So yeah. maybe give us a little bit or anybody that doesn't know. Um, and Colin can chime in on this too. Yeah. The differences in the racing circuits and the benefits of having a Yamaha or maybe an RS1 like Colin has. Okay. So yeah. So in the uh, um, Amsoil series, for example, that's a lot more the of a champ off road. The champ off road. Um, it's a lot more of a loamy, open on the gas type of track to where kind of what Lucas Oil Short Course yeah, was exactly to where you're just Big, on the wide gas open corners. You know, barely breaking. You're you downshift into breaking and back up on the gas where. That's where Yamaha's just seem to thrive. That's their happy place where 
Texplex seems to be more of the uh, it goes to go uh, dry slick, um, and it's really really tight around corners. Um, mm-hmm. And it just same with Oak Hill. That's a pretty technical track. Yeah, Oak Hills, um, especially that's an even smaller track, and it almost seems to. So what's the move like in uh, in a YXZ then? Like I know for Lucas Oil Short Course they were fantastic because you could just rev them out the whole time and yep. then just you know bang gears. Obviously, when you're racing those different series, like what's the move in the Yamaha to make sure you can keep up with guys in RS1 like Colin in Champ or? Uh, okay. I would say probably more the stuff that you do. Yeah. So that is just um, keeping your corner speed up is the main thing uh, for a YXZ because it's so easy to just die in the middle of a corner. And ball try to face. Ball, fall on its face. You know, you got to open your entries up and really kind of keep your corner speed up around corners is what I found um, the fastest way for Yamaha to really try and keep up with these RS1s. And quick shifts, you don't let it below nine grand. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. up on the limiter, the flashing light the whole race. <laughs> so, Colin, whenever you have that Yamaha Wag Z around you, is it just like, man, I got to get this bumblebee off me? <laughs> I, you can't hear them. That's a not, a, it's not a lie. They're right there. They're just revving out behind you. It's a high-pitched <laughs> screaming noise, and it's, it's a little terrifying at times, but, you know. We can't mention the comment that, that just came in, but it's really funny. No, Colin, we can't. You should read it. <laughs> We're not allowed. <laughs> no, I was going <laughs> to. No, no, we can't. Uh, it's a new thing this year. But, yeah, you can hear them coming up behind you. And, you know, they they're a car that you have to know where they're fast and yeah. where they're not when you're racing against them. So yeah, because there is some, take, take advantage of it. That's right, because there is some sections that could be a little dangerous, right? Because like coming into a corner or anything that where they get a little bit more run on you, it's like whoa, whoa, whoa. Like okay, maybe a different car couldn't yeah. have done that, but the Yamaha can do that. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, um, pertaining yeah, you really got to know how to hit your corners. Pertaining to that comment, do you have uh, wireframe glasses with yellow lenses? No, no. <laughs> I looked at him, but I haven't got him yet. Okay. This is the most I've got, and it's got one arm on it. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's all oh. I've got. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's cool that you guys have that same camaraderie, though. I mean, you guys haven't known each other for that long, uh, but you guys can go out there. Obviously, you can uh, hang out on the Dirt Life show and talk with each other, but you can also really battle together on the track, right? Yeah, it's awesome to see a, like another mature driver that really we can – I know if I – throw a door underneath Colin, he's going to hold his line, you know, and same thing for me. You know, it's really, it's really fun driving with another respectable driver. You don't got to worry about anything. It just makes for good, tight, fun racing. Yeah, Colin, you can probably... That's my favorite time to race. Yeah. Dude, I was going to say, Colin, you could probably get along with that. I couldn't tell you how many times I didn't win a race, but I battled till the end with clean racing, and yeah. I that, those are by far on the top <laughs> level of any race I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Most fun I've ever had is racing at the top speed you can ever race and not touching. Yeah. As fast as you can go, side by side, between corners, over jumps, and not touching each other. That's some of the best racing. Yeah. Period. Dude, you know what would be fun one of these days? You and Colin switch cars. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Dude. How I'm all for it. <laughs> would you? <laughs> we just... I have a broken back by I'm the doing. end of it. <laughs> you think, yeah. you think I don't call- have the arm cannons for that. I don't throw discus <laughs> 309 million yards. <laughs> so he was paying attention to the beginning of the show. Yeah, the yeah. track the track and field athlete over here, dude. Right. <laughs> Always if he loses power I mean, I steering, no Which, problem. That's happened multiple times. Oh. You know, I've somehow if I lose yeah. power steering in fighting. So I've somehow strangled it back to the finish. Obviously not. I'm the fastest place ever. That guy is right. <laughs> no, I don't even let my dad drive my car. Yeah, so M. Dunnigan, uh, 524, said you ain't driving Colin's car. <laughs> yeah, apparently not. What if he grows a mustache? Oh, uh, yeah, baby. Yeah, team, I'm working on that. Team mustache? Is that team what you're going for? <laughs> you got to show up with a Hawaiian shirt and a mustache, and then we'll think about it. Well, Perfect. Dude, got, how about I got a cheetah shirt? Cheetah print shirt that's buttoned down. That's pretty Hawaiian-ish. That's close, close enough. I'll let, I'll let it slide. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, so, like, this camaraderie is exactly what we're talking about, right? Like, so he has his family, and he goes to the races yep. and stuff, and then you guys can have this banter back and forth. But when you get on the track, it's serious business, but you mm-hmm. race each other clean. Like, that is the, uh, I don't know, pinnacle of any type of racing yep. when you can do that, right? Like, it's so awesome to hear. That's why we do this. You know, that's the most exciting. Like, I that last race, I came off. I hurt my hand. I think I figure out tomorrow, but I think decently bad, and I had no idea. All my adrenaline was gone came off the track i was just pumped i was like that was the best race i've had in such a long time just by 
battling door to door. I, I think in the final lap, I changed four positions at one point. Yeah. So what was some corner. of the best portions of the race then? Me personally, I like the long back straight back. Into, no, I'm not talking about like the portion of the track. I'm uh, talking about like the funnest portions of the track, like the where you were battling and what you were doing. Like, cause in my mind, those things are the things that you learn that can help progress your, your whole career. Right. Yeah. Cause you're like, wow, I remember this when I went inside, outside, cut in. Like, yeah. what were some of the things you remember? The Definitely the most memorable part of that race was I was, I think I was in third or fourth, going fourth, third, but I ended up getting swapped back and forth. And I ended up, I was back in either fifth or sixth. And, but I was right on the pack up to third. And I was like, you know what? I got to make something happen. So back into this, um, this tight corner, I had a good run coming down the back straight. And I just sent it right in the inside of it. And I almost had it. I had about half a tire width from it, but ended up getting spun out. But that was that was fun, just being able to say, you know what? I got nothing to lose. Just go for it. <laughs> Dude, that was it. Like- uh, I remember watching the live stream. It was a three-way battle yeah. for, for third, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, for third. Thank you it was for fun giving to watch. Yeah, thanks, Colin, for giving me a segue here because that was like that was camera gold for the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no way, Cohen is sending it in this hard. And then yeah. all of a sudden, it, you were just right in there, and I was like, he didn't even have enough room, but yeah. that was sick. Yeah, I, I ended up I spun out twice that lap and ended up somehow catching back to the end, tagging the back of that field. So I don't think you were the only guy that was spun out here. I think three of you guys. At yeah, least we were all. Yeah, that was that was fun. That was that was a great so race. That race started with with Cross killed his car. Yeah. Everybody yep. got bunched up. Mm-hmm. One guy got around. He like turned his all wheel drive off or something. Did a 360. Another guy's all wheel drive was going out. He's mm-hmm. having overheating issues. You got spun out. Somebody else got spun out. Yep. The whole time I'm kind of bored up front, but I'm fine with <laughs> yeah, that. I know. But there's a lot of <laughs> back up front. <laughs> Hey, he, he's still being semi humble, but right, still yeah, throwing right. it in your face. Yeah, dude. exactly. That's <laughs> the way I like to roll. <laughs> dude, that's cool though. No, because it, it took me a lot of years to get hole shots. That's <laughs> yeah, that's a big part of it. And we did have a couple comments come in that yeah, uh, Colin, you have a, a super fan saying that uh, you're Mister Consistent, baddest dude in the car. So that's cool. And Ben Fournier said that yeah, it was a really cool race to watch. Like it was yeah. honestly like what you're saying. It was action packed the whole time. It was the whole race. It was it was amazing. What were some of the uh, things that you would have changed in your driving uh, to make it better for the next time? Well, um, that from coming from my main car, we ended up hurting that car the race before. Um, and I was every race, every lap, I was trying to get back to comfortable with this new uh, long travel car. So I feel like I just needed a couple more laps, you know, just to start clicking off some good lap times, you know, where I can start battling up front where I felt like we progressed faster and faster and faster throughout the track. So I feel like we just needed some more time, and I feel like we would have been there. But yeah, So you were like – that sounds to me like you were really comfortable with your performance behind the wheel sitting in the cockpit, and you just wish that there was some stuff outside that could have helped you a little bit more? Yes. No, I definitely – I mean, as a driver, you obviously can judge every single thing you do. But I think for the overall performance, I did pretty good for – um just hopping into a backup car that I haven't driven in a while. You know, it's completely different driving characteristics. Yeah. Um, completely different setup changes and trying to adjust that fast and be up front with competitive drivers is definitely a task, but I feel like we were close. It's a good, <laughs> yeah. it's a good thing about having a backup car that you're used to. Yeah. At least a little bit. You're not jumping in just to get a couple laps, a couple yeah. points in. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. Um, Man, it's super cool to see that you guys are having so much fun out there. Like, you guys are com- direct competitors, but you guys can still have fun and talk yeah. about all this stuff. That's yeah. so rad, man. Uh, there was a lot of times when I couldn't have those same conversations with people, so I really respect <laughs> yeah. you and Colin's relationship. Yeah, no, that's what I love about Colin. There's such... still some people you can't. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. That's that's exactly why I can count on Colin for this. You know, good good competitive nature, but we still still friends off the track. Yeah, totally. He's not putting sugar in your gas tank. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Does that work? I don't know. Banana in the tailpipe? Is that still yeah. a thing? Uh, yeah. uh, potato? Yeah. <laughs> a potato? Can you imagine that thing shooting out of there? <laughs> That'd be dangerous. Yeah. Uh, potato to the extreme. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, what's on the next uh, on your, the schedule next for you, Colin? Uh, Mid America in Labor Day. Followed immediately by Outlaw Series. Man, yeah, we've got some cool stuff. Are you going to come to any of the Outlaw Series West races? Uh, probably not. I'm going to enjoy the six-week break I have now. 
which is rare. Five weeks now. I already lost a week. And yeah, and, uh, takes some time to rebuild the program. Yeah, basically make sure we have enough money to keep doing it. <laughs> always. <laughs> That's how it always works, right? Uh, all right, yeah. man. Well, we really appreciate uh, you coming on and hanging out with us, dude. If you got anything else before you leave, you're welcome to say it. Uh, go back, watch YouTube video, not YouTube video. You uh, watch your own in-car footage and learn from it. Ooh, that's, that's a good. What I, that's what I did between. I don't give away too many secrets, but <laughs> you're not doing it already. Yeah. Um, I went back and I rewatched my GoPro footage between Saturday and Sunday at the Outlaw Series new track, and I learned a lot. So just Ooh. just do that. Yeah, pro tip. Front yeah. back. Front did, back. You, did you guys run GoPros on the front and back of your car? We we don't. That uh, is one thing we just call struggle it. with. Uh, your, your pro tip. Right. That's the Working secret. That. Yeah, we used to, <laughs> we used to actually, uh, Colin, you might like this. So we used to run uh, a whole GP. We didn't run an AIM system or anything like that because we had a different sponsor. But we used to run, it's called a Lit Pro. It's a, a, a device that you put on top of your car. It can tell G-forces, it tells lap times, it shows exact lines and everything. So we would not only do what Colin's saying and do all the GoPro footage, but we would get exact measurements of the whole track to see where we could save an inch here, an inch there. It was awesome, man. So pro tip from Colin and George as well. I'd be lying if I didn't say I've watched some of Colin's YouTube videos too just to see what he was doing. Oh, (laughs) really? Trying to get the upper edge on Colin, right? Put them up. Yeah, which I've seen. He's just... I had to stop posting them. (laughs) Yeah, he's just... One of the smoothest drivers out there. Said, hey, man, I watched your video and I learned some lies. I'm like, eh. No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you just gave but it away, right? I appreciate it when everybody watches my stuff. Yeah, yeah. To- totally. Uh, all right, Colin. Hey, thanks for joining us, dude. We really appreciate you staying right. up late out in uh, South Carolina, man. It's only 9 o'clock. That's not that late. Wait, did you say North Carolina or South Carolina? North. North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, thanks for joining yeah. us from North Carolina, man. The really better pre- of the Carolinas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, homie. I really appreciate it. We'll Bye. see you soon at the races. Yeah, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Yep. Sounds yeah. good. Okay. Later. Right. See ya. Uh, since we asked Colin, are you going to do any of the Outlaw Series West races? We're not. We're just this Yamaha stuff. We're just struggling with keeping parts in the bin. Yeah. You know, it's really hard. We're six months to a year behind on some parts. Um, yeah, there's a lot of supply chain issues. Yes. Just trying to catch up. So we're just picking and choosing our races outside of, we're hitting all the Outlaw Series races. Um, yeah. So anything outside of that, we're just kind of laying low. Yeah, that's cool. Crandon. Uh, you guys are going to go to Crandon? Yeah. Ooh, yep. that's going to be a fun one. That'll be a good place to showcase how much power you got in the YXZ, right? Yeah, yep, that's... And have you ever been to Crandon? I have. I've been two other times. Really? Mm-hmm. How was it? Because I still haven't gone yet. No, it's... It's so fun there. It's There's no other experience on the track and outside of the track. I mean, you're on the limiter in fifth. I mean, just pinned, just as fast as the thing can go. Downshifting, banging gears. It's so much fun. So I've never been to Crandon, but we did uh, the, the race, the Lucas Oil race in Reno, Nevada. Mm-hmm. Um, and that track, I think our top speed in the YXZ was 97. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was as fast as that thing could go down a hill. It was so crazy. Yeah, so however fast a YXZ can go, that's that's how fast we're going in a YXZ. <laughs> we <laughs> really wanted to break 100, but I don't think we did. So Yeah. Uh, but that's cool, man. Crandon will be a definite good time. Yep. Uh, and then, so, what's your goals this year, then? Like, what kind of stuff do you want to accomplish? Um, this year, we would love to finish out on, on the podium in the point series. Um, just finish consistent um, with this new car, trying to get that one fast and up to up to speed. Um, with getting in it halfway through the season. But, yeah, that would be a great goal for us this season just to um, keep going with that. Uh, yeah, uh, John Huffers, thanks again for the insult, dude. He said I'd be really cold. I'm a big heat guy. Like, I'd rather be in the heat than the cold. So <laughs> I don't know if, if Crandon would iceberg me or not. Me too. No, we're, <laughs> I'm heat guy all the way. <laughs> a big Arizona heat guy. Um, so one of the things that I was going to ask, and we're tell you because you're talking about Crandon and you're talking about – uh, going out to Texas and racing the Texas Outlaw Series. How is it traveling with the family? Because you have to spend a lot of time in a car. Do you get to see, like, fun vacation spots? Do you get to go eat at spots? Like, what's the vibe? Yeah, no, it's definitely a lot of fun. I mean, we, we definitely have our spots. We have it all lined up to every gas station, every single time, every hotel. Um, everything's pretty much dialed. Who plans He's, all that out, man? Oh, that's all That's all him right there. Oh, Dad? <laughs> Dad gets it all dialed yeah. for you? Yeah, he, he does most of the driving and or, gets us out there safely. <laughs> and constantly watching the uh, fuel consumption because I oh. know how far it is in the next gas station. Really? And so 
because we, we got a pretty decent sized trailer to tow behind us. We got to make sure that we hit those spots because if we go to a different way, man, I'll get in or get out very oh, easily. Really? So, yeah, we know. So if you have to divert, yeah, if we have to divert, we might be in trouble. So I know exactly, you know, <laughs> constantly calculate. Okay, yeah, we got enough. We got enough. So what happens then, if you got to drive the races yourself, bro? Oh man, it'd definitely be a tough task. But <laughs> I feel like watching him and the some driving experience I have behind the wheel of that thing, I feel like it's doable. Maybe not to Crandon, but is that one of the things you got to learn from the best? That is, and he <laughs> is the best at that. That's it's no doubt. It, it works out going. Both going and coming back, we stop at the same four gas stations. Oh, at the same ones each yeah, way? each way. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. so crazy when you travel, all the logistics that you have to go through. I didn't even think we'd talk about this, but it's actually kind of a cool subject to talk about. Like, Because sometimes you can't even go to where you want to eat unless you walk a mile because yep. you can't fit the rig can't through there, there, right? Exactly. Like, so there's so that's many it. weird like first world problems that happen yeah. along the way. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of cool, though, because you guys get to experience all that stuff as a family. You get to, you know... Traveling across the country is not just a breeze, right? There's yeah. all kinds of stuff that can happen, and you get to see cool things. Like, I'm sure you guys play games across the road, like all <laughs> kinds of fun stuff. Well, not so much games. Uh, the game is, the game is who's, who's going to watch the dog next. Oh, <laughs> is it? the game. That's the game. So Lincoln, he's, we bought him, uh, got him when he was a pup, and um, he's he's been a race dog from day one. Oh, really? So... When we first got what kind him, of dog is Lincoln? He's a Weimaraner. Oh, okay. And uh, so when we got him, we uh, we started thinking all these race names. Let's name him Fuel. Uh, how about Axel? How about uh, on and on and on? Because we knew he's going to be traveling with us the whole time. And uh, he's actually he does pretty well, but um, he gets a little antsy, and sometimes Mama gets a little tired of being the sole. Uh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. is. Right there. <laughs> Look, he just he's, showed up. Man. He's easy. <laughs> he's trying to Sorry. take out all the camera equipment yeah. he's so excited to uh -huh. see you guys yeah. uh, it, but it, it, it's kind of cool because he goes on the road with you yeah. it's a big there family, we go. Yeah. big family travel right yep. uh, what are some of the favorite places that you guys have been able to visit or do have you guys like do you guys ever stop and like enjoy the ride um, no it's more of a stop and get some sleep so we can get up and go the next day yeah, yeah. just yeah. get the job done get yeah. it done as soon as possible so yeah. when you guys are going across the country then do you guys have to share the driving duties like what's the move like when you're going across most of the time he I mean he muscles up and does it the whole way you know he's he's great he's been doing that forever which I feel bad and I trust him <laughs> over me oh Lincoln's already getting more comments than we've had uh -oh. Yeah. oh great I already <laughs> love Lincoln on Instagram but yeah no I trust him with that thing Ten times more than I do, even with all the driving experience I have. But no, I definitely yeah. Well, it's a different type of driving experience, yeah, right? Yeah, but I do think that it's cool <laughs> that you guys do that that stuff. And traveling across the country, like I said, is is no small feat, right? Mm -hmm. When you're trying to get there to race and do all of that stuff, you have a times crunch. And one of the things that I was going to say is to go like kind of like I don't know backtrack a little bit. Is you guys still both have regular jobs? You guys have to work mm -hmm. to be yep. able to support this passion that you have to go racing, right? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, we both, basically, my normal hours are 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Where do you work? We, I work at uh, x -Broom. It's a street sweeping company, so we manufacture street sweepers on the road. And I do the PDI department, so I'm the uh, pre-delivery inspection, so I'm the last eye around everything and around that. So it's, it's been fun. It's definitely not racing. When but did you start doing that? This is soon. This is recent. So ever since I, uh, like, the week after I graduated high school, I started. So that's what? Five months, six months. Oh, okay. So it's real recent then. Yeah. But that's pretty cool though, man, that you're still willing to put in all that work to help support your dreams, like yep. to push forward. Because I'm sure all of the stuff that you make <laughs> at your job <laughs> is going right back into the racing program. Yep. Um, no, it's awesome. And that on top of college, I do, I do some college here and there as much as I can on top of going to the gym every day and keeping the race program. It's definitely a, a busy lifestyle. But Yeah, and you operate and maintain most of your whole race program, right, with the help of Dad? Yeah, no, he helps me a lot. So he's, um, he definitely is the last eye over everything on the car um, to make sure every nut, bolt, everything's tightened the way um, to his spec and everything he wants. But I definitely try to do as much as I can um, on top of all the other issues I have. But... Um, yeah, you no, probably learned awesome. a lot from your dad, right? Oh, yeah, my whole life. I mean, we've been, cool. been working on stuff since before we can walk. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
But those are cool experiences. So like I was just talking about going across the country with your family, right? Like those are awesome experiences, mm-hmm. but there's also a lot of time spent in the garage with dad or, oh, yeah. you know, if mom wants to come out there, whatever it is, like those are really, really quality experiences. Yeah, no, we've definitely spent a lot of time together in the garage. Yeah. Learning. We've <laughs> almost developed our own mumble language. We don't have to pronounce words anymore. We just kind of mumble and we kind of grunt and point, grunt and point, and it kind of <laughs> works out that way. But no, it's been great. <laughs> hey, did you have to ever hold the flashlight for dad? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's how it all started. That's how it all started right there. <laughs> Actually, you should tell that. How did that how did that happen? When I when I was crawling and I was Oh, do you really want me to tell you that? Yeah, story? let's tell it. it. Oh boy. <laughs> was it okay, a good so, story, Sean? Huh? Was it a good story? Money near muffs. Oh, no, well, no, no, no. Talk about the one where I was crawling underneath the Yeah, I know, but you well, had to go PG, the PG version. Okay, right. let's hear the PG version. Right, so, <laughs> so he so we were changing oil in a car. I came our car was I was changing oil, and uh, he crawled underneath uh, to hold the light for me. I think he was maybe three. Yeah, and crawled underneath the car to hold the light at three years old. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he wanted to be part of that action. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. apparently yeah. he was. Uh, he was like, "What the heck?" The flashlight was the light, the light started moving. I'm like, "What was going on?" I looked back, and Cohen had crawled underneath the car and was moving the light. Got nice. outside of the house somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sneak, sneak up on yeah. Dad to help. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's perfect timing, though. Way to like take the initiative to hold the flashlight for Dad. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> he was uh, still in diaper, so may have been younger than that. Yeah. But that was a good, probably, yeah. learning experience because now you know, all right, my son's going to be in the garage for a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. How much time do you guys think you spend uh, working on the program, like, in, on the, not at the races? Uh, I mean, most of our weekends are filled up just with prepping the car just because we have so much stuff to do during the week. So it's Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, just working on the car, getting it ready for yeah. that next race. But and it, it kind of depends on what happened the race prior Yep. You know, yeah. if, if we take a hit somewhere, then you got to tear down further and investigate a little more and see what's going on. But even even on the races where you think nothing happened, you still go yeah. through and you find stuff constantly. Our cars would go all the way down to pretty much a bare frame every, yeah. after every single Lucas race. So you're you're probably minimum 30, 40 hours yeah. yep. between races. Between that's, races. I agree 100%. Yeah. That's just very minimum. Prep, making yeah. sure it's not going to fall apart. Yeah, exactly. Keely, yeah. do you know if anybody uh, requested to join us? Uh, yeah, grab the 10-millimeter socket, John yes. Hopper said. <laughs> yeah. It's always... It's always missing, too. Yeah, always. <laughs> uh, that's one thing that we talk about with one of your guys' sponsors, Boxo Tools. Oh, yeah. They always have two 10-millimeter sockets in their yep. toolkits, right? <laughs> uh, so, it, yeah, that's funny that you guys say that. And uh, the Yamahas are all metric, so it's always yep. the 10-millimeter, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I was just thinking about when you were talking about working on the cars is I still have so much of the setup sheets and mm-hmm. uh, uh, checklists yep. that I should just give you guys a bunch of printouts. Oh, we can all. compare. We have we have a spreadsheet of ours as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Those setup sheets came in so handy because yep. you'd look at them from the race before. You'd be like, all right, clicker here, clicker there, yep. boom, you're good to go. Yep. Uh, do you guys do stuff like that for your res race program? Absolutely. And so maybe have Cohen give us a little bit of uh, – an insight on what you do to make your program better, not just in the garage, not working on the car, like, but with setup sheets, tracking, how do you do better at the next race, like stuff like that. Yeah. So it's always just looking at the previous race. Cause you're only as good as your last race is what we kind of, or I kind of think about it. And, um, so we always just look at the car, look at the setup, look at my driving and always just make a little improvement every single time you get on that track, no matter what, um, is the goal and it seems to be working out pretty decent for what we're doing you know and making sure everything's just spotless zero mistakes whatsoever yeah. in the car and the driving and I, I think we've we've kind of gotten away from the spreadsheet i mean we still write things down here and there but um we've been doing it long enough now to where we can see what the car's doing and we know if we need more compression more rebound right and we don't so much worry about it because the track does change so much from right. race weekend to race weekend that it's not overly critical we know that when he goes out in practice we can say oh it's doing this but if it goes blue groove we probably need to go that way so i think our bigger challenge now is trying to figure out which way the track's going to go yeah and, and follow that and follow that because yeah. that's that's what it seems like we're we're always blistering fast in practice it seems like we are the fastest car on the track 
But once it gets race paced with the, the track getting a little bit tore up and blue grooved, it seems that we be starting to struggle um, once it gets towards that direction. But It's crazy, though. And when you go to new tracks, like it's so I don't know when to say it's difficult, but it's so um, I don't know. You have to be on point, right? Because you yes. got to be like as fast as you can get to top speed is going to be a competitive advantage compared to everybody else. Exactly. Yep. So, uh, all right. So we were talking about a little bit about the uh, outlaw, the Texas Outlaw Series. We oh, were yeah. talking about the Outlaw Series West. Well, now we got our fearless leader that runs uh, all the Outlaw Series stuff, Brian Adkison. On what's up, Brian? How are you? Can you hear us, Brian? Looks like he's talking. I don't hear him. Uh, maybe turn up your fo- volume a little bit on your phone, Brian. I don't know if you can hear us or not. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's, it's cool to see when you have to have that, I don't know, I love seeing new tracks and rough tracks because I feel like that really gives an advantage to somebody that can act quickly, knows their setup, yep. like what you guys are talking about and is able to manage it really fast. Yeah, no, it's definitely a huge advantage, um, being comfortable with your vehicle and the adjustments that you make to that vehicle and how the car is going to react. It's definitely a huge advantage, um, with how many years have been racing a YXZ, mm-hmm. we're getting a lot more comfortable and a lot faster and confident in making those decisions. Yeah, I guess that does le- show you how good it is to be uh, adapted to a program mm-hmm. like what you guys have mm-hmm. been, right? Yeah, that's, which is why that's been our, that's why we kept sticking with this YXZ year after year after year, just because we know it so well. Right. And do you, um, like, do you think it would be different if you had a different car? Um, I f- Feel like the general aspects of tires and stuff yeah. um, would kind of translate over, but other than that, suspension it might react different. You know, we try they're to totally set, different cars, yeah, and drive yeah, with the chassis we, and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. we would try to do the same adjustments, and would probably react completely different. Okay, um, well, I, I hope that Brian can hear us now. What's up, Brian Atkinson? How are you? What's up, guys? I have a little glitch in the matrix. I think I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's okay. Our matrix is glitching big time yeah, over yeah. here too. So we're just trying to do our best, man, just like we always do. Uh, well, hey, thanks for joining us, dude. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's cool to see, uh, you know, we're sitting in uh, Gilbert, Arizona, basically Phoenix right now. Uh, we were in Texas a few weeks ago. All three of us are all, uh, how many people? Did Kendall go to that one? Yep. Yes, she was so, there. Yeah, so five of us, uh, six of us, we're all in Texas doing the same thing, talking about racing, talking about dirt, all that stuff. It's pretty cool to see that everybody comes out and hangs out at the facility and races with you in your series. Yeah, man, it's uh, especially these guys that, you know, when I found out that Cohen was going to be on the show, Cohen doesn't even know about this, but I was going to, oh, I did send you a little video to play for them, but we don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny um, if I played it right now. It'd be like super weird. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just awkward, no one knew what to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're right, though. Like it, it's got to be meaningful. I mean, that's a pretty big trek for a whole family to come over to Texas and race with you. It's so far for them. And, you know, these guys are some of my favorite families that come out to race. And you know, if there's one thing that I wish I had, I wish I had more time to be able to hang out with them. But, you know, it's just it's yeah. hard. But yeah. I love I love it when they come out. I love talking to them every second of it. It's it's, it's awesome. And I, yeah. I wouldn't ask for could, could Dude, he, more. These guys were even talking about uh, putting a turbo on one of their YXEs to race against the Millers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Never, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> that would be pretty cool, right? Just come out swinging. Uh, yeah. Hey, so we actually had um, uh, John Huppert said, do notes from your last race at a track, are they useful or does the track change too much from the race to – or too much from race to race? Um, it's, we don't know much about this new Oak Hills track, but at Texplex, it was almost consistent. The track would be the same. It would just go blue groove almost every race. So it translated very, very well. Um, from weekend to weekend, but it seems like this new track is going to be about the same, just how well the dirt is, how consistent it is. You just have to get used to it? Just have to get used to the new changes to set up. So so when I hear him ask that question, I kind of break it into two pieces. Like, what can you take from your baseline setup at a previous track that you uh, have been to racing, and then you can take it over to a track that's completely different? Do you have to start from scratch? Do you start with a baseline setup and then move into it? Like, where does it go? No, I feel like we definitely start with a baseline setup, and um, based on the conditions of that track, if there's a bunch of G-outs or if it's way faster, um, we can kind of um, guesstimate on the new track and make a lot better decision 
on coming into it, coming into it, and what yeah. that track's going to do, and the car's going to react. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's pretty cool to see all these. Like Brian, whenever I think about it, like it's it's so cool to see. I mean, he's only 18 years old, and he already knows all of these things about racing and moving forward, right? So, like, even if he didn't want to race side by sides anymore, he'd be able to move into a different motorsport. All of these things that he's learned with the help from his family and his dad have made him what he is now. Like beyond his 18 years. I think that if uh, if he doesn't want to race side by sides anymore, I think I'd rather him just come work for me. Means <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it is cool to see that he goes all the way over there to Texas. Um, oh, actually, I asked a bunch of other people this. What was your favorite part of the Outlaw Series uh, Oak Hill course? My favorite part was probably that that last backstretch um, into that left hand sweeper. That was fun. You just haul ass and then just let it hang it in, in the last corner, you know, and get it checked up right before that last, uh, that downhill jump. Yep. That, that was every lap. That was always a good, a good, a good line around that corner. Dude, I kept calling it out too, Brian. I was like, that's where people are going to start dive bombing. And yeah. then what do you do? <laughs> Cohen just comes in there <laughs> like full throttle. Kamikaze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there was some good, uh, some good lines taken right there on that weekend, especially when we watered. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, sure. uh, Brian, you've worked for some other race organizations and things like that. You've obviously seen Cohen at some of these other tracks and stuff. Um, yeah. What did you think about uh, when you first saw him and you first met him? Um, you know, I just knew because I think I maybe only caught Cohen, was it the last race or two at works, I believe. Yes, I believe so. Uh so uh, just right off the bat, I knew that he was going to be quick. You know, I, I think we, we were talking on the podium. Mm-hmm. And um, when I found out that he was coming out west, I was like, okay, this is going to be good. Or I'm sorry, not out, out to Texas. I knew that it was going to be good. That's pretty cool, man. When yeah. you got, like, sometimes it feels weird, right? Because, like, you can ask other people and yeah. you're just like, you don't think that they've ever seen you drive ever, yeah. but they have. Yeah. And they took note. Like, doesn't that feel like, I don't crazy. know, it feels good and weird at the same time. No, it feels great. I've been looking for this response for a while now. I mean, I've, this is the <laughs> first validation. time I've honestly, yeah, validation. <laughs> I've heard from anyone else about my, my driving and um, kind of program rerun with racing. It Dude, good. So I was telling him, Brian, like uh, when, I think it was Friday when we had the, uh, the practice at, Oak Hill in Texas, and uh, I was cruising the track just looking around. I was like, oh, cool. I'll just shoot some video right here because I see, like, these guys are getting it. And then Cohen comes around, and he's just ripping this turn. He, like, bangs down a gear in his YXZ, and I throw him, like, the peace sign or, I don't know, the horns or something out. And all of a sudden, I see his hand come off the shifter. (laughs) He does it right back to me. (laughs) And then he gets, like, you can see his left hand, like, moving a little bit more, and he gets up on the bike a little bit and just drives off. I was like, that was a boss move, dude. (laughs) Yeah, that that was awesome. I remember that vividly too. That was that was a great time. <laughs> he's honestly he's he's one of the fastest guys out there. I mean, unfortunately for him, he's had so much bad luck with his yeah. car. But um, I mean, he, I always look forward to seeing him out there ripping. Yeah, yeah. it's it's cool to see, man. Yeah. Es- especially in the like, I love to see the diversity. That's why I like seeing all yeah. the different cars yeah. and yeah. stuff and the different techniques. So it's it's really neat to see. Um, I don't know if Cohen's going to be able to do any of the Outlaw Series West stuff. Um, you, Dude, if you had a fresh car, you could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you had a fresh car. But we just – parts, man, it's just really our biggest battle right now with this program is just trying to keep parts yeah. on. Yeah, just picking and choosing where we're going to Unicorn needs yeah. a new long block, and I've been waiting a few months for that bad boy. So I, get, I feel <laughs> your pain. so yeah. crazy yeah. just how yeah. hard it is to get stuff. Yeah, yeah it really is. Um, Man, we were, t- we were talking a lot about the family atmosphere and vibe and stuff like that, going to the races, Brian, and all the time they get to spend together. Like, you've heard it a million times with all the people that come to your track. What kind of stuff do you uh, get when people come to the track? They're man, oh, man, that was such a long drive, but we got to see this, we got to see that. Like, all of the camaraderie just has to be so meaningful. You know, it's really something I, I put priority on, uh, when it comes to doing these kind of things, I, cause I, I'm the kind of guy I take a lot of things personal. Right. So I, I really try to be friends with everybody. So everybody can come and talk to me if they have any issues or, or anything like that. Um, I think it's just the person that I am, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, and it, it comes off in a way where luckily it's a big family atmosphere out there. And 
I wouldn't have any other way. I think it's awesome that people think that and, and, uh, let's keep it going. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I was talking to Colin or, uh, Cohen about when we were talking with Colin was, um, you know, like going through school and like, I don't know, man, he's got such a busy life and he still puts all this effort back into racing, like just to go to the track for like, let's just say it's two hours of driving time, an hour of driving time for the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. Like that to me just shows how much dedication these guys have, uh, and traveling with the family. Like it's so cool for me to understand that because we've done that so many times in our lives, Brian. Yeah, I mean, and luckily for us is we have some really good competition out there and to be able to to compete at our track and be able to win, let alone a race, maybe even the series, if you keep podium a series and win some cash, um, it's, it's a big accomplishment, you know? So it's one of those things you just keep trying and, and make it fun and, you know, just everybody keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, which that is why we keep coming back, you know, um, well, it's the more the racers, the better, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's great. What's the most racers you've ever had on a course with you? <sighs> Definitely, I would say Junior 1 class in, um, back in the Lucas days. We yeah. would have insane car count up to like 40 to 50 cars on the track at once where they had to split up A, B, me, yeah. a, B mains. It was dude, nuts. Dude, I can't wait till the Texas series gets like that. Yeah. The Outlaw series gets like that in it's Texas and, that the, direction and, too, and the West yeah. Coast series. I feel like it's getting that Absolutely. direction too. But yeah. like I remember yeah. a time when uh, we were out at Lucas in Glen Helen. We had, I think it was, it was either 38 or 42, one of the two numbers out on course. That's how yeah. many drivers we had. Yep. Yeah. And at a short course track like Glen Helen, it was insane. Yeah. After. And I botched qualifying so hard, and I was in a razor at the time. Yeah. So I started 28th. Yeah. By the finish line, I was three feet from the podium. Yeah. And I told my spotter when I crossed the finish line, I'm like, how the F did you get me through that? <laughs> like, yep. that was basically impossible. So, like, yeah. those are the races that you remember, right? Oh, yeah. Like, no, that's, that, was, that was one to remember for sure. We went from – we qualified 30th, same thing. We absolutely botched qualifying and end up – what was it, like 6th or 7th, you know, by the end of it, which at that time is a huge accomplishment for us. Dude, it's so crazy, though, right? And yeah. at the end, you're like, dude, what? Like, what is it? <laughs> yeah, like Ricky Bobby. Like, I don't even remember. I blacked yeah, exactly. out. exactly, yeah. Like, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian, I can't wait till uh, till we have the opportunity to have people experience those same experiences with you guys, your guys' series, man. Absolutely. Ben says yeah. 12 hour has a lot of cars on track, badass race. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so we got a couple comments that just came in. Uh, Anthony Munsey, I think is how he pronounces it. Looking forward to coming back to Texas. Cool, man. We'll see you out there. And then, uh, yeah, Ben Fournier said at the 12-hour, uh, there had a lot of cars on the track. That was a badass race. Yep. Uh, did you race that one or no? We have not. We've Dude, always, that race looks gnarly. Yeah, it looks insane, which we've always yeah. just, every year we've been in the process of getting cars ready for next year. And every time it seems like we're down to bare frame exactly the weekend. Yeah. Of the 12 hours. So we've never oh, really? really had a car put together yep. um, for that, but I would love to get out there. That seems like a great time. Dude, you got to share the driving duties. There's no way. Did, you, did Sean want to drive, you think, your dad? Oh, he'd think? love to. He's, we've been trying to get that happen for my dude, whole racing career. That point. would be cool. I do, how, Brian, at the 12 hour, how many people share driving duties usually for one team? Is it two or do they have three? Uh, it's it's three people per team, and usually every team has at least three people. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's pretty stacked. Yeah. But this year we're looking at probably 120 cars starting off that starting line. Woo! Wow, that's that's some car count right there, <laughs> dude. <laughs> that's gonna be rad, right? That's gonna be awesome, dude. That'll be super cool to see. Yeah. Uh, all right, Brian, we're gonna talk with. Uh, actually, you know what? Hang on for just a second, because I'm gonna ask this question to Cohen real quick. Actually, I want to ask Dad this question first. Okay. Um, you can answer it either either way you want, Sean. Um, what is your favorite part of racing? Getting air, corners, the high speed, like maybe something else. Getting air, towing that 44-foot trailer. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> That's how it is? The air up the bags, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like uh, you could talk about it maybe in a, a context of seeing your son do it or anything like that. Um, uh, for me, I mean, jumping's jumping. Yeah. Um, for me, it's more cornering. I, I like to see the car handle smooth, um, 
stay tucked yep. and get the traction and just take off like a rocket ship. So that's one of the things that I always appreciated about a good car setup is predictability. Yes. So yep. predictability in a car will make any driver feel super confident and Absolutely. they can go out and win races like you have never seen, right? Yeah, completely agree. Um, all right. Well, what's your favorite part though? Me personally, I like the speed aspect of it. I love going fast, kind of like Ricky Bobby, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> I love hauling ass, you know, just high speed corners just throwing it in just going as fast as you can that's that's what i love about driving uh okay we got a couple other comments come in stone belt says uh i don't know what this means but may need to come with auction money is that something for you brian uh yes yeah, so the 12 hour we actually auctioned off the first 10 spots oh, uh, oh. on the lines and it all went to charity this last year <laughs> that's actually pretty rad i wonder how much uh uh this guy's uh, stone bill is trying to throw in on that auction to get a good sp- uh starting spot man yeah i think the first place spot last year went for 2200 all right so bring more than 2200 stone <laughs> yeah. bill <laughs> at least because you know they set the bar last year uh and then john hopper said yeah pretty impressive car count says a lot about the racing there yeah and it not just the racing but like the competition the whole all that stuff the racing is great but um it's the, how do you want to say it? It's the way that this, the race is organized, right? It's 12 hours. First of all, that doesn't happen right. yeah. unless, like, unless you break down a desert race or yeah. you're doing like some gnarly race, right? Yeah. But on a closed course, that never happens. So it's rad to see that, uh, that be available. And then there's also a good payout as well. Yep. So that's super fun. So it's always nice to take gas money home, right? Yep, always. <laughs> um, all right, Brian, uh, you got any questions for Cohen? No, man, just uh, happy to drop in and say hi and well, say how much I appreciate y'all coming out. And uh, we'll see you guys here pretty soon. Cohen, if you can't make the uh, West race, come on out and uh, I'll put you to work. We'd love to. Oh, hey, oh, speaking, of, you to work. That's speaking of putting him to work, dude, this dude just went to Disneyland with his girl. They did 34,000 steps. So this dude is not shy to walk around, man. You can put him to work big time. Yep. Wow. Yeah. But before you go, Brian, I just... I just got to say, like, the way you run your series is just amazing with um, going through series, um, seeing how they've been run. And I just, this is just perfect for grassroots racing, for anyone trying to get started, for pro racers. It just makes a lot of people happy. And I just love the way you run everything out there, which makes us keep coming back. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that a lot. No, I, I, no problem. I do it for you. I yeah, appreciate man. that. Thank you're you. doing a great job, Brian. Say, so, hey, thanks, man. We really appreciate you staying up late and uh, hanging out with us. So, uh, yeah, Greg Kelly said she's going to uh, – or he or she uh, is going to come out. And uh, so excited for the West. Sorry, I couldn't see it. So, thanks, Greg Kelly. All right, Brian. We'll see you later, bud. All right, guys. I'll be watching. See you, Brian. Thanks, yeah. man. We'll see you. Bye. See, it's always cool. Like, I, this always gets me, like, on every show. Like, it's – uh, heartfelt for me because there's so much love in the industry. Like I love that everybody can support everybody else. Like I tell so many people, I'm not going to get too far off on it, but there's so many shitty people in the world and mm-hmm. you go to the grocery store and a dude looks at you sideways because you're buying something that he doesn't agree with. Yeah. But in the off-road industry and all the things yeah. that we've seen on the show tonight, there's so much like love and compassion. Yep. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's super, super yep. cool. So I wish more people could just learn from all that stuff, right? Uh, hey, how was Disneyland? It was great. Besides the sheer amount of people that they let in one place. <laughs> what was your favorite ride? My favorite ride is definitely probably the Incredibles ride. That, yeah, the Incredicoaster? Incredicoaster. Dude, I was going to say the that same thing. That one's definitely got a special place in my Did heart. Did you take your hands out and like go no hand the whole way? Yeah. Whole way. I knew you were going to do <laughs> that. Do were you throwing way. shouts out to the photographer? Not there. I didn't see any <laughs> photographers there. No, not that time. If but. I was there, I would have got you. Yeah. Exactly. Give you an Insta banger for you yep. uh, on the Incredit Coaster. <laughs> uh, that's cool that you guys went out to Southern California. So it's nice that you're able to still uh, enjoy life as well. You yep. know, like you can get out and you can uh, take a breather, so yeah, to speak. Exactly. Did you like going to California? I liked Disneyland part of it, but the, I mean... I love the California and the state and the weather and all that, but the the people, man, there's just something else out there. They're just the way they the driving. That's the main thing. That's really what they I'm get going wild. Off of. They get wild out there. They like to bang some doors and <laughs> get after it on the highway. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So I have a couple more questions that I wanted to ask. I was going to ask. So you've been number forty eight for a long time. Yep. Where did that number come from? So that's that's a special place in my heart. Um, that started from when I was born. I mean. 
from when I was like the day I could start walking and remember is just 48 has just been in my life consistently. Um, whether it's the time, whether it's a VIN number on a car, whether it's literally anything um, in just my like life. Just like ingrained in your, in your brain? Yeah, it's just, it keeps well, showing up in my life. I just, it's hard to explain. Yeah, I think it started out um, with the NASCAR 48. We always yeah. liked Jimmy Johnson, but my grandpa's uh, football jersey, he always wore the 48 number when he played football. Yep. But what really makes that number special is that we can go out to dinner. And it'll come out to something, something 48. Yeah. We can literally drive across country to Texas and we'll pull into that parking lot at 648. Yep. Every, every single time. And it's always around stuff that's happening that's good in our life. It's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. And it's I, crazy it is, how that can't happens, explain right? it. I forgot. Somebody told me about this because I have a similar story, but somebody told me about like, uh, when numbers align like that, there's a certain reasoning behind it. Like there's this like, I don't know if it's like astrology or whatever it is. Like it's so, those things that happen for like yep. a reason. Yeah. Uh, I had the same kind of things happen. So my number's always been 19. Mm -hmm. So I, br I got really badly injured in 2019. Mm -hmm. 19 months later, on October 19th, I raced my next race at the yep. UTV World Championship and uh, I, got, I don't know, it was something like the 19th spot, starting spot and like all of these yeah, crazy yeah. things. And I was like, dude, like what the, what the Yeah. Like yeah. how does out this stuff even... out of your control? There's no way. You yeah. Could, yeah. It's possibly. wild, right? Yeah. And so like, I think that's super cool that you have that. So it yeah. sounds like to me, like no matter what, you're going to try to stick to that number. Oh, no matter what. Yeah. That's my, that's my main goal. It's just, I, I don't know what I would do without 48. It's. <laughs> It's, it's, it's all huge. around us. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have a yeah. question from John Huppert who said, uh, "Do you have time to ride for fun? And where do you ride?" Um, not really, honestly. Um, we don't really have any play cars, but um, no. I mean, every like all the race cars are just strictly for racing and practice that weekend. We try to keep the miles low on those cars and um, don't want to put any extra wear and tear. Yeah, I feel you. And racing is expensive, man. You oh, got to yeah. got to make sure. And yep. like with all the supply chain stuff, it makes yep. it even harder, right? Yeah. Uh, would you, if you had the opportunity, to go for a like a trail ride, a play car oh, ride, an enthusiast to. ride? That'd be so much. All right, fun. John. Next time you come down to Phoenix, I know he has uh, <laughs> he has dual residency. He lives in the we're going to call it Antarctica, okay, uh, Minnesota, but we're going to yeah. call it Antarctica. Uh, but yeah. he also has a place down here in Phoenix. So okay. next time you got a. Uh, you probably have to sit shotgun because Cohen will probably want to drive, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he could take you out in his Polaris, man. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, yeah, awesome. racing is fun. Stonebilt said it is fun. <clears throat> That's why Cohen likes to do it. It's addicting the competition. Uh, and what about the color green? Like you've always had green on yep. your rigs. That's just kind of what it boiled down to. I mean, I've always just loved the color green, and it always just stood out on the track. Um, anywhere, like my mom. And everyone in the fans could always see, like, oh, like a quick glance and find my car right away just yep. because of the bright green color. That's I remember the first time going to a works race, and I was like, oh, cool, there's a black car, there's a black car. And I was like, wait, look, there's a green guy. Yeah, exactly. And then I was yep. like, oh, and then so I knew who you were just yep. because of the color. Yeah, and the color and me as a driver, I've also seen a connection with that. Like, oh, it's the green car, and then they'll match Cone Crawford, and then it's like, oh, it goes perfect together. Um so what everything. if you get a team like if like let's just say you're a factory can am driver, you gotta use yellow and black, man. Nobody's gonna know who you are. Well, I got the forty eight number. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, split the difference. Split yeah, the difference. split the difference there. Yeah. See if you can maybe have Brian change the series rules to have a green number play. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty cool. Uh, be awesome. what has been some of your fondest memories like during racing? Like uh anywhere. Like uh let's just say starting from when you're a little kid, maybe now, like anything. Um, I mean, from when I was a little kid, I remember this moment vividly, and I think you do too, is the first time I got on two wheels. Um, oh, was, like on the bicycle? Like, yep, yeah, which is back in the split lane wild horse short course track. And it was the first oh, time. Oh, I remember that split lane. That was, was fun. That was so much fun. Which, which lane did you usually uh, the prefer? Fast one. The, <laughs> the fast one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was the inside lane. And I remember almost every lap consistently – I remember getting up on the bike and setting it back down and crawling up the wall because I had to set the car back down. I had to crawl up the wall, which is a reaction of it. But every time, almost every lap consistently, I would just set her back so down. So you were able to wheels. place the car that precise every single lap? Unfortunately, yes, because I didn't want to end up crawling up the wall every <laughs> lap. But no, that was definitely 
thinking, oh, wow, that's, I'm getting up on two wheels. I should turn that way now. But I don't know. I feel like that's pretty cool, man. Like, I, cause yeah. those are like, you're such a young kid at that yeah, point, right? Exactly. Like for him to do it, dad, how was it seeing you where you're like, all right, I'm glad he didn't turn the other way. Yeah. <laughs> there goes, a, there goes a body. Yep. yep. <laughs> turn right into it. Yep. Uh, yep. yeah. John, uh, said, yeah, sounds good. If he, he wants to ride in, uh, uh, a Turbo S on the other side of the Estrellas. I don't know what that means, but um, yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool to go for a trail ride, yeah. hang out, hang out with those guys. No, that'd be awesome. Make some new friends. <laughs> yeah, not always, just always not just racing friends. You right. can have enthusiast friends. Yeah, um, yeah, it, but it is cool. It kind of shows you uh, again two things that uh, people have watched you. They yep. know who you are, and you maybe didn't even know it. And then second, it also shows the camaraderie in the off road world. Yeah. So That's it's, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see. So green and the number 48, are there any other things that you do? Are you superstitious? You put your left sock on first, your right sock on? Like, how do you usually do it? Um, My main thing is I always let the car warm up to 100 degrees before I let it move. If I don't let it do that, I feel like something bad's going to happen. I don't know why. This is kind of what it's developed into the years. and That's, <laughs> that's just how it is? <laughs> that's just how it is. Everybody's got their own little quirks, right? Yep, only that, though. Uh, like, there's not any... Doc Wald 7 says, hi, Spider-Man. Does that mean anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's oh, up, buddy? That's Spider-Man right there. Yeah. Oh, they call Sean Spider-Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yep. What for? You got to give us a little bit of juice here. Well, so years ago, I used to have a uh, rhino, mm -hmm. long traveled out, and we were at the Dunes Buttercup, and we had a golf cart next to us, and I just was jumping back and forth between the two like Spider-Man. And uh, that's how I got nicknamed Spider-Man. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And Jason Weller, actually, uh, they used to work on that car. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, no, that was uh, Jason Weller used to work on that car um, back before I think Corey even started racing off-road. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That long ago, yeah. Dang, that's pretty cool. So you yeah. had one of the bad boy old school rhinos? Old school 660. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Did you have it all mod? Do you have clutch oh, changes? Like, it, do you have motor work? No, no motor work, sock motor, but um, had the long travel kit on it. Um, big sound system. Yeah, and that was. I remember that was the very first thing I jumped. Like, and it would got it, some air. It had Elka on. Really? It, it would soak. It would. Yeah. It'd soak anything up. Could you go full sand and it would yeah, bottom out? Full sand no, full on sand. anything. Yeah. Really? Yes. It was nuts. Yeah. It wouldn't go fast enough. Where is that bad boy now? I don't know. It keeps <laughs> popping up on. Actually, Doc Wald. That's my uncle. But oh, okay. He keeps finding it on uh, on Craigslist and offer up. Dude, you back. guys got to get that thing I back. Know, I know. Right? That would be awesome. Because then you could actually go out on a trail ride and go full sender and the whole ride. Oh yeah. <laughs> That wouldn't end well. No. <laughs> that, would, that would be fun, though. Yeah, that would be awesome. Just show people who's boss in an old rhino. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, what do you guys have planned? Uh, actually, we have a couple more things that we're going to talk about. But um, And we got a rapid-fire Q&A. This could be fun for you and your uh -oh. dad. Um, what are some of the plans that you guys have in the future? Well, um, definitely next year we plan on sticking to Texplex and um, choosing with cars. We don't know um, with well, that. We're definitely going to go. Oh, you may have a manufacturer series, change. Or the huh? Outlaw Series. Yeah, I keep getting. We've been calling it textbooks for a while now. But Outlaw Series. Um, yeah, we've been kind of dicing with that idea. But we definitely, our heart is Yamaha 110%. We're going to try and make that car work competitively and fast as, um, as much as our ability. But I know a yeah, dude that after he gets a long block put in the unicorn that he's going to get rid of that car if you guys are interested. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty sweet car too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so... You know, doing a series like that takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of travel time, yep. stuff like that. But that sounds like a really good plan. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, what about some goals that you have? Do uh, you want to become a champion? you want to become more consistent? Do you want to uh, heighten your driving skills? Like, all of these things come into play when you want to have a better program. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, definitely my five-year goal is just to win a championship. But I've had this, this vision in my mind for a while now. And I want to win a championship in like every major form of racing, whether it's drift, oval track, dirt oval, um, short course. I feel like no one's really ever done that before, and it'd be awesome if I could somehow wrangle that together and make that happen. Dude, that's a lofty goal, <laughs> yeah. though, man. I <laughs> yeah, think that's pretty well set it high, you know. I think that's pretty cool that you're having your your goals set that high. Yep. Um, Sheldon Creed did a little bit of that, um, yep. but he got stuck in something that was beneficial to his racing career yep. so he could keep doing it, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so being flexible at the time is probably something, or a chameleon, whatever you want to call it, is probably something to keep in the back of your head because let's just say um, that all of a sudden you're really good at drift and you start making some money at it. You just stick with it, right? Yeah. 
make a good living out of it. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be super cool. What are some of the things that you like doing when you're not at the races? Um, I know you like working out. Yeah, working. I mean, it's hard to say. I always feel like I'm doing work, whether it's working out, working out, or working on the car, something with work. But I love uh, Octane Raceway, the go-kart track. <laughs> That's where I always kind of see. Are you on the top of the boards? Yeah. I mean, pretty much consistently every time I get there. Um, I try to at least just because it's kind of humiliating if I don't. Yeah, we had a we had a race like with the the Method Race Wheels guys uh, yeah. over at uh, K One Speed. Oh yeah, and we had like Caden Danbury, like uh, Ethan Groom, yeah, uh, some guys from Australia, and like a few other people were there. I started out sixth, got three dudes straight off the start, yeah, and then uh, or no, two dudes straight off the start, and then worked my way up to third. Yeah. I was pretty proud of it, but Caden schooled me, dude. Yeah. It's so, especially if you get off road racers into a into a tight go kart track. Oh, like I pushed that. a few people out of the way. Oh, it is <laughs> never good. Nine times out of ten, you're getting banned, and it's it's always a great time. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's definitely elbows out. Have you ever gotten smoked? Like oh, just yeah. like taken out by some dude or completely anything? all really? the way? Yep, into barriers. <laughs> So that's all. That's the fun. That's part usually of me it. doing it. Oh, yeah, you're right? just taking but him out. I, but I had to wait for him to come back around. I was like, oh, I can't keep that's how it works. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny, man. We yep. should definitely plan something like that so we could have everybody come through. Uh, yeah, see, the, the Australians Ben and uh, Toby Musico, Musico said, uh, "Yeah, that was awesome." Yeah, <laughs> his son got second. So always nice. a great time. Yeah, I love going to the go kart track, man. It's expensive these it days, is. though. Yeah, it is. That's why it could I... be like 150 bucks deep after yeah, you get out of there. Exactly, and that's minimum too for do any of the other family members the mom and sister like going to the go-kart track ever um not I think what about your of, lady she's down she's down she's down for anything which is great but yeah she'd love to go spin some laps around a go-kart track <laughs> you think she could get you after she has no practice or never no? know she could spin a couple laps and get schooled by her but we'll see <laughs> <laughs> Man, going to the go-kart track sounds really fun right now. All yeah. right, so we're going to wind down the show a little bit. So I think maybe um, before we do the rapid-fire questions, just okay. kind of give us a little bit of a shout-out to some of the people that have helped you along the way. And I don't mean just like sponsors that are in your pocket yeah. right now. I mean, like, because there's been so many people. Obviously, mom and dad have helped, but yeah. there's been a lot of people that you've talked to over the years. No, I mean, first of all, I got to give everything to my parents. I mean, they've given me their all and then some with financially, with everything in their lives, with dedicating their lives towards – towards me and my happiness with the racing. I just cannot thank them enough. They've done you feel, everything for me. You can totally understand why time is more valuable than money these days. Yes, huh? exactly. <laughs> with work and everything. But no, it's awesome. And Kindle, you know, always kind of keeping up with my crap. Um, <laughs> staying sister. happy through everything. Yep, my sister. Yeah. Um, well, and, your sister's no slouch either, dude. Oh, she's, no, she's, she's, she's a, a smarty guy. pants, dude. Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely got the brains in the family. She's She does all of the school work with 4.0s and the... And the track, she's actually the real track star. She, she's fast. You know, she's always on the four by one team and kicking ass and that stuff. Oh, but, so she could wax you in a foot race? Well, I would. Oh, say, oh, here we go. go. Competitive <laughs> family go. vibes. I hear you. No, but she's definitely fast. You know, she's got that competitive aspect more than I do. I would say she loves to beat people. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's been great. That's cool. And, uh, uh, yeah, actually, real quick. Uh, Amanda Wald said, where's Lincoln? <laughs> He's locked up. Yeah, He's he had to take his wires down. He, yeah. he was getting all Tasmanian devil, so we got to be careful with some it's of this in the bedroom equipment. Now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, some more people that uh, have helped you. Yeah. Uh, so, um, first of all, going way back is Eric. Eric has always been kind of a person I looked up to um, as a person and just the way he's kind of taught me through racing. Um, Who's he's, Eric? He's an old mechanic of ours that we had in the mod cart um, class. He's actually a mechanic for, uh, works with uh, Cole Mamer in the Pro 4 program. Oh, cool. So he's doing a bunch of work with them. Um, great guy. Um, actually just had a kid, um, which is really working out. And he's, he's awesome. Um, great guy I look up to. But um, another person, I mean, Shelby recently has helped us a lot with uh, connecting us with sponsors and um, opportunities. Um, like this um, to really get us um, right. It takes an army, right? Like, yes, it takes an army. It's not what you know is who you know, which I've figured out quite fast in this world. Um, and yeah, well, I, just, I think both. Like I, I always, I always like when people have these debates because I feel like if you're a good person, first of yeah. all, it's going to lend to a sure. lot of good things that happen, yeah. right? Like the number forty-eight just doesn't happen like that for yeah, a reason. Exactly. So if you go with the flow and you understand these things, and then you also put yourself in a good position, like what yeah. you're doing with your program and you're associating with these cool people. Yeah. So it's not just who you know, it is what you know yeah. and how to work with all those things. Yes. I think both of them. Which exactly, I mean, 
I love giving to people too. I'd love to help everyone out. You know, all the younger racers come up, ask questions and it just, that really uh, makes me happy, you know, as a yeah. driver, I feel like I'm really helping towards um, a goal because I've been there and I know what um, they felt as a younger driver and the struggles and the highs, the lows and everything. And I would just love, I love that part of racing yeah, too. Yeah, giving back makes giving a back. big difference. Yeah, yeah I love that. Um, man, you've had a lot of people in your corner, dude. That's for yeah. sure. And uh, the green has helped too because oh, yeah. people <laughs> like the color green. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I'd it, like to give a shout out to the Grove City girls. I know they're... If, They've also given a lot towards them. They've made a bunch of shirts and come out and come out and hang out with us all the time. Oh, so you got a fan club? Like, oh, oh yeah. Look at you, big they, stud over here, fan they've, club. They've got a group. They're always supportive with everything, no matter Ooh, what. <laughs> that's cool, though. Uh, it's really neat to be able to understand that people support you that much, yeah, right? I, I couldn't ask for any more. I love it. Yeah, and you've obviously got support from everybody else too, like the yeah. people that sponsor you and stuff too. Yeah. Um, lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to my my grandma and grandpas. I mean, they've always supported me um, as much as I can with everything in their life going on, also. But they ever um, get to come to the races or watch you race, like oh, yeah. the live stream or something. Yep. No, my grandma, uh, nanny, she loves to come out to the races as much as she can. And, uh, you number know, one fan, number one fan. Right. Know, she's always in my corner, no matter what. And Nana, you know, always out there supporting me also. That's my, does she ever get out to Texplex or I mean, uh, to the text outlaw series? I have the same um, problem as you. I don't think so yet. Not yet, but, um, it would be cool. Coming. Maybe if, uh, if we are we're all at the on. race at the same time and I'm commentating, maybe we could get her in the booth. To oh yeah. <laughs> to commentate with me. <laughs> yeah. That'd be that would be awesome. You'd she, love it. Yeah, she's a great time too. She's uh, a <laughs> uh, that's, that's a great time. All right, so yeah, uh, Amanda Wald said uh, Cohen is the best driver. Oh, <laughs> sounds like you got another fan. There's a bunch of green hearts. I don't know it's what the, the green hearts mean. It's the green man. Green, it's green, green, green place. The green racing. <laughs> All right, uh, do you want to throw a shout out to any of your sponsors real quick, and then we'll do yeah. the rapid fire. Um, so I got a, first of all, Coin Power Sports have helped us a lot Travis! with with getting this car and um, everything happening so fast. Obviously, as you know, in racing, everything has got to comes down to the last weekend, the last hours. But never have enough us time. A lot. Never. Um, Rugged Radio is helping us a lot with getting our radio set up and dialed in this year. Uh, Boxel Tools is always helping us with our with our tools and getting us make sure we're uh, dialed in the garage. Um, Dude, all the guys campus. over there, Robert, Lucas, yep, getting the Grant, everybody, yep. Action Sports Canopies getting us the uh, our canopies dialed, always look, making our uh, show look professional and everything yep. clean. We talk about that a lot. Actually, is like when you have your pits and all of your uh, setup set up well and yep. showing what people can see. That makes no. a big difference. It for means your a lot. And uh, and Demon Power Sports, you know, they've always um, done a lot for us. Even before they came a sponsor, we've always chose them just because of their quality their of axles, works. their stuff works, and especially <laughs> for they don't charge an arm and a leg for it. It's they really support the racers, and it's just there's, we've never had an issue with Demon Axles. We just love them and the support, and even on social media, there's always liking my stuff and stuff like that. And X Broom, they're a sponsor uh, of mine. Uh, my grandma and grandpa, they're always um, helping me out with my dreams, my uh, my supporting, supporting with that stuff. But Yeah, well, now you're giving back to them, too. Yeah, you're as much as I dude. can. Yep. I think that's pretty cool, man. When uh, when you have support like that, it really is meaningful, and you want to keep those relationships for a long time. Yeah, and last, Maxima, they've they've actually been my very first sponsor since day one. We've always um, yep. stayed loyal to them, and they've stayed loyal to us. You know, they've always supported me and never had any issues with Maxima and been up front with them. <laughs> Dude, I like how you give uh, detailed uh, input on all that stuff. So good yep. job to you, man. Yep. Thank uh, you. All right. So you want to do rapid? Let's have your dad go first for the rapid fire yeah, Q and A. You I'll, go I'll second. You want to do that? Sure, let's do that. All right. Um, All right. We could also play rapid fire Q and A with your mom too, if she yeah. wants to come yeah, in she here. Might need to. All right. Uh, so uh, I don't know if the, you can bring the headset over here if you want. Okay. Say hand it to me on the side here. So uh, we'll start with Sean, and then we'll go to Cohen, and okay. we'll go to Keely afterwards. So the first question, Sean, is tacos or hot dogs? Tacos. You're going tacos? What going kind of tacos. tacos? You can bring the headset over here, and then you can stand up behind us. Uh, tri-tip. Oh, tri-tip. You're getting fancy. Yes, oh, yeah. sir. Best tri-tip tacos out there. Ooh. Oh, he's oh, cooking them? Oh, he's cooking them, yeah. Really? Are you doing it at the track? He might. Never, you never know. We never use them enough time, but yeah, I've always, it's always like, hey, we should bring, this, bring the what grill. What do you do? Like bring the hibachi to the track, or like are you like cooking on the grill, or what? With the grill. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Dude, that's pretty insane. 
Yeah. You know this guy likes tacos, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe we're going to have to put that that out on the track, put you to the test, right? <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, Cohen, what are you going for, tacos or hot dogs? Definitely tacos all the way. All day? All day long. I'm not Big much taco of a hot guy. dog kind of guy. But. All right, so yeah. – um, Welcome to the stage. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you guys. Uh, Thank you. We really appreciate all of your producer skills today. Thank you very much for helping out with behind the, show. the scenes. That's yeah, funny. behind the scenes, take care of it. Way more important than us. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know what we're guys doing up here, here right? <laughs> uh, all right. So the question was rapid fire Q and A: tacos or hot dogs? Tacos. Tacos all day too. Are you going Sean's, Sean's tri- tacos? T- yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Carne asada. Oh, it's tri tip. I mean tri tip. Tri tip. Your flavoring is. Oh, what kind of flavor are you putting on these bad boys? Well, now, now I'm that's the secret. That's oh, the secret sauce. You're not tell too. Us now. <laughs> oh, that's how it goes. Uh, all right, chicken or asada? Sean, you go first. Chicken. Asada. Asada? Yep. Yeah. Chicken. Chicken too? All right. Well, I could go either one, so. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Dunes or the river? Dunes. Dunes. Easy question. Dude, have you seen that Red Bull Dune race? I have. Yep. I just. They seem to schedule it in the hottest time of the year, <laughs> every year, and it's just always kind of. <sighs> I think this last year was in December or something. Though, oh, okay, well that works. Or November. I yeah. think it would be cool if you got out there. Yeah. You, are you good at like reading dunes and stuff? Yeah, I mean that's what where I, I know best. That's where that's what I learned everything is out in the dunes. So I mean, I, I like the confidence. I'd like to put see those you. skills to the test. I'd like to see you get out there. Uh, yeah. How about you, Kelly? Dunes. Dunes too. Okay. So I mean, no, river's great, but yeah, river's also a great time. Something too. different. Well, you got the pool back here, so one step yeah. ahead. Just yeah. don't put a side by side into the pool. I heard yeah. that. I heard side by uh, sides don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next question: action shots or still shots? Action. A- action. Like, you're going action too. I'd say action, but I love a good still shot. You know, it's just good to see. Just like when you can see just like a, a sexy car without its panels on or something. Yeah, like, or you know, just like the, a trophy the, the, the nitty gritty. You know, you get to yeah. that time to pause and really look at the. The details of the picture. But. Yeah, and that's the way I feel about taco pictures. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Instagram, for all my taco pictures. Uh, three-wheeler or quad? Ooh. Ooh. It's got some history. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Man. Give me the history before you answer Well, uh, Spider-Man there, uh, Doc Wald that wrote in there, he had three-wheelers that we started bringing back to the dunes. Mm-hmm. and uh, Like lately? Rid- well, mm-hmm. last probably last five years. Yeah. We, had, we hadn't ridden them in probably twenty before that. You want to just sit on this? <coughs> and, I'm good. Um, you got plenty of camera angles. They were a lot of fun. I'm so, good. Okay. Thank you. Though. I would say I would say three wheeler on Friday, quad on Saturday. Whoa! That's Versatility right. over here. Oh, um, I, I gotta say quad all the way. I mean, I'm just a four wheel guy at heart. Big quad guy. Big quad guy. That's what I started <laughs> out on, and that's that's what I'm riding with quad. 100. percent What do you think your sister would pick? Probably quad. I mean, she's ridden quads only. You never know. She might like a three wheeler. She seems like the type that dies. I feel like since she's good at track and field, she'd like the balance of like getting up on one wheel and just like riding it on the bicycle the whole time on the three wheeler. (laughs) Feeling it out a little bit. Yeah, Yeah. she'd love it. (laughs) What do you think, Keely? Mm, Three wheelers were always dunes and fun, and the kids were little. And well, three wheelers are AKA death machines. You know that, right? Well, and it was always in the background, but. I mean, either is not my deal. Like, <laughs> well, what are you I might take to go? pictures dirt bike? of these dirt guys bike. on it. <laughs> are you going dirt bike? <laughs> not that either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one eighty five S's and the. Oh, yeah, I remember was, those bad boys. Yeah, the suspension was, all, was yeah. the, the amount of no tire suspension. pressure. Yeah. There was no suspension. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three psi works. Yeah, yeah. three psi is dialed. Yeah, that's dialed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so pizza rolls or jalapeno poppers. Oh, boy. I think we should let Keely go first. I yeah. feel bad that she's not answering first. H- jalapeno poppers. Yeah. yeah. There you I'd, go. Sure. I'd say jalapeno poppers, too. Are yeah. you pizza rolls? No, <laughs> no. Because it just burns your mouth. Oh, it burns the fuck out of your mouth. <laughs> it's like yeah. hot lava. Every time. Yeah, it's bad. Always. No fun. You can't That's blow the... on it hard enough to cool it off. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know what I figured out that it does help it, though? Cold Olive Garden Italian dressing. Ooh, really? Or ranch. You dip it in there, it helps a little bit, yeah. but then when that squirt like the that little, stuff comes out, it just yeah. jacks you red. Yeah, you got that figured out. You had some history with that. Yeah. Oh, I used to eat a lot of those, dude, when I was studying. Yeah. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee? But, but lately, it's that mud water stuff I like. What it's, the heck is that? I know. It sounds terrible, but it's actually... Uh, it's mud it's, water. It's a good option. 
Uh, Amanda Wall said, your mom is so cute, Cohen. Uh, <laughs> I love yes, you, Amanda. Is. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and Doc Wall said 185s all day. Is yeah. that what you were saying? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's the man himself. I missed yeah, it. Uh, I got video of him riding on three-wheelers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My mom got real hurt on a 185. Ooh. She tried to get all gnarly on a jump and flew, like flew off. So See, that's why I don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they are death machines for a reason. Uh, did you already answer coffee or tea? Do you guys already answer that? I'd say more of coffee. I'm not much of both, but I'd say coffee. Why, are you like an energy drink or water guy? Uh, more of an energy drink. I mean, that's kind of what I, that's my go-to when I need a little pick What kind up, of energy drink are you doing? <laughs> It depends. Either the pink monster, the pink juice monster. That's what I like. Or the the new, uh, what is that? The the orange or uh, orange Red Bull. It's the apricot apricot one and cherry. I don't know. It's really you know good. a lot about energy. <laughs> yeah. Bucked up. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. Bucked up. You know they've helped me out. A <laughs> is that a real discount. energy drink? It's that's what it they is. Are, they have energy drinks for the pre workout company. They've actually come on and. Helped us out this year with some, with some oh, pre-workout. Oh, there you go. Cool. Yeah. That's rad. Yeah. Uh, all right, Sean. Coffee. What are you going? You're going coffee, coffee. all day, too? Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a good one. All right, Keely, what's your favorite movie? Oh, man. I mean, there's Dang. so many out there. Yeah. I, like, what hour? Hey, what <laughs> hour? I mean. Well, I have two of my all-time favorites, and one is uh, A Beautiful Mind, and the second oh. is Requiem for a Dream. Okay, the second com- one, I don't know yet. Yeah, they're completely opposites. Requiem for a Dream is a real trippy, druggy movie. So, okay. like, it's, I don't suggest kids watch it. <laughs> um, but I'm a big fan of Jared Leto, so that's why huh. I watch it. Gotta uh, go check it out. That one's cool. And then uh, A Beautiful Mind, just because it's so brainy. Like, I feel like uh, Kendall would like it. Oh, yeah. Um, t- for sure. I mean, just movie- you talk, and I'm going to get my okay. list. <laughs> your mojo. Do you already yeah. have a favorite movie? Please tell me it's not Ricky Bobby. Well, that's obviously, that's, that's got to be in the... Step Brothers? One of the greatest movies. But yep. any... Oh, I love Step Brothers. That's a great one. Um, recently, it's been uh, The Great Escape. That's uh, That's been a good one. That is a good one. I didn't I get know. to watch it all the way through. Yeah, I just, I like the the like precise thinking of it to get out of the, the prison cell of all the stuff he gets out. And that's, I don't know, that's been a good movie recently. How about you, Sean? You got any? Braveheart. Oh, mm-hmm. big Braveheart guy yeah, over here. Yeah. Dang, that yeah. is a pretty good one. That's like a solid emotional uh, attachment to it, too. Yeah. You didn't find any? I, I mean, what you just said reminded me of Shawshank Redemption. That was a Whoa. good movie. That's a good one. It's Intense. dark, but yeah. I mean, good. Bringing the intensity yeah. over here, dude. Wow, I don't know. Are, That's just are, what came up. You guys are dark. Jeez. Uh, okay, Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. 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 I'm kind of pissed about how they redid the, the app, though. It's basically TikTok now. I yeah. hate it. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Make everybody get along and happy. <laughs> uh, that's that's not a superpower for you, but I like your vibe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to control minds. I feel like oh, that dude, be... please, no. <laughs> yep. Could you imagine what he would do to us if he could control our minds? Just think about it. If you can control minds, that means you can control anyone else with a superpower. What and if you can use them as your advantage? What if your girl has the same power against you, though? Well, we're going to have to battle it out. Oh, then, my know? gosh, dude. Could you up. imagine? Holy smokes. Yep. <laughs> this is going to be wild if that ever happens. I know. Well, you could talk to Elon Musk. He could probably make it happen. Yeah, he probably, right. he's probably got it locked up in a dungeon somewhere. What's basically. your superpower, Sean? Well, so since I'm getting up in age and my bones are starting to ache a little more, I'd, I'd like to just be able to sit in my chair and just move stuff with my hands. Oh, like Minority Report? <laughs> just, yeah, or, I could work on the car. I just, you know, didn't have to actually do anything. Just just levitate stuff. Just levitate yeah. stuff. and <laughs> You know that your dad's going to like start doing stuff with yeah. you. He's going to like, your dinner's going to be there and he's going to like, you're going to be putting it in your mouth. He's going to like take it away. Yeah, like. not if I could tell him what to do or not. Not oh. if I can control it. So you could control the levitation, make him work on the car with your own brain? Oh, everything. Man, that's, that's why, that's just, that's messed up. It's, over, that's it's OP. That's, that's the totally best superpower by far. Come on. All but these, if, every, if all, all of you are happy road and working together. Wouldn't matter. You were just happy and everything yeah, would be fine. No, everything yeah. is going really good here. <laughs> yeah. What do you think Kendall's superpower would be? Ooh. We should get her over here to, to tell us what her superpower is going to be. She can think about it while we ask this next question. She uh, had to step out. Oh, she did? She okay. had to leave, yeah. All right. So Darn. Uh, we're never going to know. She might just control all you guys. Yeah. yeah. Netflix or YouTube? Wow. Who's going first? I got mine. Well, I mean, I'm learning a lot, a lot more about YouTube. I mean, YouTube is bringing a lot more than... 
Netflix can because it's bringing stuff like this. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And plus, like, you can go to YouTube college. Like, you can basically get your yeah. degree on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Just Netflix yeah. is about movies, I think. But Yeah, exactly. Uh, what about you? Yeah, no, definitely YouTube all the way. Just because of the everything. You got everything. You got yeah. Netflix on YouTube. You got anything you want to look up, any car. You have any videos on YouTube that any of the people che- listening can check out? We've got two. I mean, I haven't really gone out for the whole a while ago career but, but that's yeah, why you have the program marketing behind you now yeah exactly that's right oh yeah that helps Shelby. us out tremendously she's gonna totally help you all right yeah. sean youtube you, you're going youtube as yeah. well uh videos or photos and i'm getting mostly in a uh, social media context um man there's so much because if you're just doing social media media then Videos because then you could take some snapshots from the video. Oh, there you go. Okay, so you're talking <laughs> about it from deep, a uti- yeah. you're talking about it from a utilitarian standpoint. How are you going to yeah. be producing all of this content? I like right. it. Most people are just like what they're consuming. Yes. So, no, I definitely, I definitely like videos all the way. Just because that's, I feel like when I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed, I feel like I, it's like, oh, that was cool. You know, sliding through a corner compared to a, a picture of a car sliding. Through the corner, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like a, you learn more. A I'm getting a little a over justice. all these trophy trucks and whoops, though. Like I can see <laughs> less of that bunch <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. I feel like there's so many. Yeah. How about you, Sean? Are you going videos? Video, or you're going videos too. Yeah. I'm a big fan of videos as well. Um, all right, so this is kind of a. You might have to answer for uh, what you've seen Cohen do, but it's most memorable race. What is it? Maybe from your standpoint and thinking about him. Okay. Well. I mean, I'll, I, there's two that I am. Well, I'm now I'm running through a bunch, but so many. I mean, I remember that that you guys talked about it earlier. It was when one of your first at for, with uh, Lucas and you biked it, and it was one of my whoa that just could have gone real bad. And I oh, learned it was like a realization. Probably. Yeah, it was the first time for mom to go. That could have been it but um that's when i learned a lot about cohen and sean and just how they work together and and in learning about each other and his instinct and all that kind of stuff but then you know another one was when he i think it was works and you're like literally the car was on a bicycle it was like all four tires were yeah we got a video of that grounded and land back down and Whoa, that's Heck wild. Enough. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty yeah. impressive. Those sound, those sound like pretty crazy races. What yeah. do you think your most memorable race was? Me? Um, I got to say the UT World Championships and works. Um, winning that was awesome. I feel like that was some real validation for me. Um, with doing it in a white Z in a desert um, standpoint was huge. You know, kind of taking a white Z out of its element and, and winning with it was awesome. Yeah, that is super cool. Doing something that somebody hasn't done before. Yeah. How about you, Sean? What do you think? Uh, the one that stands out to me is uh, one of his very first races in a junior one. I think it's Lake Elsinore. And we had just started racing. I think it was probably maybe his third or fourth race, and he turned in the fastest lap. And I can't even remember if we were on the podium or not, but it yeah. turned people's head at that point. Like, oh, wait a minute. This kid just started, and he's already turned in the fastest lap. No joke, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yep. super cool to see. Yeah, those milestones actually mean a lot, right? Like, yep. So we're talking about numbers. Numbers are meaningful. Like those little things that happen throughout. And you can always look back on those because those are now like ingrained in your right. head, right? Yep. Uh, let's sure. see here. Favorite snack. What favorite snack are you going with? Um, oh, I'm going to get so much crap for this. <laughs> so like kale chips or something? Yeah, just that a real. <laughs> kale chips? Peanut butter and apples. Peanut butter and apples. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's got your it, sweet. If you savory. were going to say kale chips, I would have probably gave you crap. I mean, that. I do have my favorite kale chip, and that's yeah. why he. Yeah, that's. Threw what's that your out. favorite snack, Cole? I my go to is cheese. It's always. I feel like that's always happy medium, not too salty. What about if you're in the car though? Like you're doing a desert race. What kind of stuff are you putting in there? All right, I'm going um, kind kind bars, almond caramel. Yeah, that's that's why I say protein bars. If I'm going if I'm going that route. Um, That'd be something with a little bit more health involved if I'm <laughs> going to do some <laughs> some racing after that. But if I'm just laying around the house, I feel like cheese is my big cheese it guy. Huge cheese. So I feel like maybe next time we should like you get the helmet painted. You should just put cheese. On the <laughs> yeah, side. That, right. That yeah. or M and M's. So we were talking like about a little bit about it before uh-huh. the show, like what kind of non-endemic sponsors you could bring in. I found. Good one. I think we there found you go. one. Dude. Let's right do it. There. Done for. Uh, 
I don't know who makes them, Frito Lay or somebody, maybe, right? Uh, yeah. Sean, what are you eating on the road? Barbecue Lays. Barbecue Lays? <laughs> yeah. All Solid. Right. Solid. There you go. Uh, okay, let's see here. The next question is Supercross or Motocross? Supercross. Supercross? Yep. Do you know anything about it, Mom? You want to skip Not it? enough to really. All right, we'll skip it. No, Supercross. thank you. You're going Supercross too? Yep. Dude, but the Motocross this year has been insane. It has. It's been so good. Uh, what other form of racing would you like to try? I Clearly, you want to try a lot, but. Um, drift. That's kind of like drift car. Uh, Formula Drift is where I would just love to get my feet wet in that. And that would be awesome goal just to go try that out. That would be pretty cool. If uh, we're going to switch this question a little bit for you, uh-huh. mom, if you could get in a race car, what kind of race would you do? Any kind of racing? Yeah. Or is it, are we talking about four no, wheels? It's a dream world. We can just answer rapid fire as fast as you want. <laughs> any kind of race. Yeah. Any kind of race. Well, um, see, that's where I'm just not a competitive person, <laughs> but I would be like, are you sure you, you can win if you want? I know. <laughs> <laughs> just let him pass just you. Him, yeah. <laughs> no, I, um, any kind of race. Yeah. Maybe you just do, do good in like a sailboat race or something sailboat, where you can just you hang go. out. That sounds You'd fantastic. That. Yeah. Yeah. Get me on a sailboat on the ocean. All like right, Sean, what racing are you <laughs> trying about? I'll do NASCAR. NASCAR, really? Yeah. Are you going to be number 48 too? Because well, I think you're going to no, have to call somebody. That. I could do 84 maybe. You're going to have to call somebody and <laughs> yeah. have them give you that number. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, speedboat or dragster? Mm, dragster. Dragster all the way. Yeah, dragster. Dude, you guys hate the river or what? No, I, I mean, we <laughs> no, just had some fun on the river with the GC girls. Oh, that's why. Okay. So no, it was are, fun. It was great. It was – Cohen didn't get to go. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Final question of the night. Chips and guacamole or french fries and ketchup? Chips and guac, for sure. This, this is a tough question because I'm actually not a big fan of guacamole or ketchup, but – I would definitely if say. If I ch- said French fries and ranch, then you would have been all over it. No, no. Not, no. I'd say just straight up French fries with good, cooked real well, you know, with a great amount of salt. Do you get French fries well done at in and out I, I love, no, I don't do, I don't go that far, but yeah, I love the way, way in and out in and out <laughs> cooks their stuff nice and fresh. in and out French fries well done. Oh, yeah. That's the way to do it, man. Um, all right, you, Dad. Chips uh, and guac. Chips and guacamole, too. Yeah. So we went to a Mexican restaurant last night called... Uh, Mario Queen. Oh, yeah. yeah they yeah. the custom guacamole in front of us. You know what they put in it? Pomegranate seeds. Oh, yeah. perfect. I was like, holy cow, this is a game changer. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's funny you say that because if we had more time, that's where we we're going to take you for lunch. Oh, yeah. there you go. Mario <laughs> Queen. Perfect. So I would have ate there Tuesday. Ate there, yeah. All right. Thank you, Mom. I appreciate hey, you. Uh, thank coming you. Over you here. know what? You're yeah. the best. You're the best, George. Thank you, thank you for hanging out with us and giving us your uh, insight on the rapid fire QA. All right. So. Fun. Um, is there anybody else that you want to thank before we go? Because we're going to thank our sponsors and hit the road. Yeah, I mean, all those sponsors, man, they just really made this program what it is this year, and it wouldn't be possible without them. And then just, I just can't thank my parents enough. I mean, you really just, they mean, they've dedicated their life um, towards this, um, just making my dreams come true, and it's just amazing. I will say that uh, just the few hours that I got to hang out here, first of all, thank you for letting me hang out at the house and having all these people come into your world. Uh, it was cool to see the amount of love that your parents provided to you and your yep. sister and the dedication that they provide back to whatever it is that interests you guys as your goals because that's going to make you guys rad human beings later yep. in life. So I think yep. it's super cool. Um, A-Ride Moto said fries and fry sauce. Fry oh, is that sauce. Freddy's fry sauce? Is that, that what you're talking be. about? That's probably Freddy's, talking Freddy's about. Fry, so- fry sauce is pretty fire, dude. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we're going to do the outro now. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. We wanted to thank all of our sponsors KMC Wheels, Max's Tires, uh, Motul, <coughs> excuse me, Shock Therapy, JL Audio, Evolution Power Sports, Zollinger Racing Products, uh, Cryo Heat, and Vision Canopies. All those guys, please support them as much as you possibly can. We always have them linked up in our social media. Um, every one of those companies, uh, you can go to sponsor deals on the dirtlifeshow.com. Click that button. You guys can go save some money and get. Uh, uh, get some help from all the companies that help us as well. Support the industry. Um, like I said, it really is good to pay back and help all of the people that support the industry very well. Um, really appreciate you guys for joining us tonight. I know that Cohen's family was able to tune in, so thank all of you guys. Um, thank you. And, and hope you guys like the episode. And uh, next week, 
Uh, oh, next week we're taking off. I got to have surgery on my face. I'm getting oh, all the place yeah. taken out of my face on Wednesday. So yeah. I'm going to take a break. You guys are going to have to sit tight. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much to, to the Crawford family for having us. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. It's nice to be in Arizona. And, uh, man, we will see you guys next week. Good night. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Dirt Life Show. See you next week.